yo, 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 what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back what's to Let's up? Chop It Up. Follow us on up? Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Brothers, how you doing this weekend? What's going on? How you doing? Rod, how you feeling, brother? I'm feeling all right. You know, I had a little procedure this week. I made it through, but um, I'm all right, you know. I had to get a little kidney stone removed, but... um, Yeesh. Yeah, yeesh. <laughs> it's right, yeah. That's a little rough. I don't wish that on nobody unless I don't like them, because then that's a real way to get them back. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? But other than that, everything is good. Other than that, I decided that I am not going to be eating fast food no more. That's a good thing. Um, yeah, my son is in town. And other than that, everything is good. I'm just I'm, I'm just tired of trying every chicken sandwich that comes out. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, still haven't had the, I still haven't had the Popeye's one. I refuse. Yo, to be honest with you, I, I had the Popeye's chicken sandwich for the first time maybe, I say, two weeks ago. You know what I'm saying? I waited for um, the line to die down because, you know, I wasn't going to stand on line for a chicken sandwich. That's, that sounds crazy to me. But other than that, I made a pledge this week. I am going to stop eating fast food. Yeah, I'm going to do Popeyes. Once any, any, they start doing the hip-hop commercials. I said, I'm done. I can't. And yeah, black yeah, people yeah. Singing, singing and chucking and driving for I couldn't do it. I, I, said, I, refuse, yeah, yeah, yeah. I refuse to do it. Derek, yeah. how was your weekend, brother? Hey, man. You know, my week was 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 lovely, man. You know, um, I would just like to shout myself out. This is the third weekend in a row that I got my ass up and went to the gym. You know, oh, right? that's what's up, man. That's what's up. Oh, good, yeah, Eric. man. So, yeah, good. I got I got a good trainer, you know, young white guy, man. He just is just in shape for no damn reason. Bro. He just mm. like, you know what I'm saying, just walks around, just looks beautiful, man. Dude looks like he's <laughs> sunshine and, and air, you know what I mean? I'm just trying to cut out the weekend vodka, man. This guy's <laughs> amazing. Man. But he's got Don't me on the porch, man. Eric. Don't let him yeah. hurt you. All right? <laughs> yeah, I'm feeling it though, man. I'm feeling oh, yeah. it. But he's Don't yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. It's good work, man. It's good work. What's up? What's up? What's up? Yeah, I'm good. my brother Kelvin, how was your week, man? Yo, it's crazy. It's kind of like Derek's. The difference is, it's the third month in a row I haven't been to the gym. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> so we 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 got you know similar goals, just different directions. But um, <laughs> yo, I just you know I realized I need I need a nap. I haven't had a nap since I was little. And I'm just the brother just burned out, you know what I'm saying? But um, other than that, everything is good. I'll say this: I had a death in the family last week, went to a funeral, and so I came up with this idea. All the elders in my family uh, this August, I decided to uh, get my cousins together. We're gonna do something to honor all of them now. Just everybody that's above seventy plus, seventy five plus, just get them all together and thank them and do something for them right now. Tell them that we love them, give them the flowers right now. So that's what's going on in my life, and um, you know, I'm excited uh, for another episode. Of Let's chop it up because I look forward to that every single week. Yeah, man, I'm glad you're doing it because my family, you have a family reunion every year, and this is the second year we're not going to be able to do it. But we're thinking about trying to get some of the people in a certain region together to yep. celebrate. You know, like our, our elders are leaving us and stuff like that. Exactly. But um, I had an interesting guy. So I had vertigo for the first time. Whoever had vertigo, that's the worst shit in the world. <laughs> Feel like you have an earthquake every day. The thing is, where vertigo reminded me of with the when I was in college, and I smoked some bad weed with this girl we call Lady Heroin, and actually, I mean, me and my man PC, I ain't gonna say his real name, we had us tripping. That was the last. So I never want to see Lady Heroin again. I never want to witness vertigo again. In my I'm life. tripping off. Of, you just <laughs> killing with somebody named Lady Heroin, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Decisions. I gave it a name. I gave it a name. <laughs> But you, you wasn't yeah. doing heroin though. No, 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 no. This is oh. a long time ago. Long time. Ago. Long, 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 long time. But this this week, you know, uh, was uh, uh, for those they was uh, on the chopping block. We have this. Yeah, let's go ahead. We on the chopping block. It's, it was St. Patrick's Day, and and then I, I want how do you guys feel about people, black people, celebrating St. Patrick's Day and Cinco de Mayo? Cinco de Mayo. Sorry. How, how do you guys feel about that? I think when none of them celebrate any of our holidays. Well, I think you just said it. Um, I remember when I used to work in the police department, I used to see like certain black cops like celebrating um, St. Patty's Day. And, and, I, and I would kind of look at them a little sideways saying like, if, if you wanted to celebrate some sort of black holiday, you couldn't get a white person in here to put on any type of shirt or put a flag on their shirt or anything like that. They would look at you like you were crazy, but you sitting mm -hmm. up in here with a clover and stuff. And now all of a sudden for that one day, you believe in leprechauns. You know what I'm saying? It's just crazy to me. <laughs> You know, it's just, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I never celebrated St. Patty's Day in my life, and I never will. You know, what I mean, it has, it has nothing to do with me. Mm -hmm. St. Patrick's Day is a great after work celebration. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I know why you're saying that. Hey, man, you know, listen, let me tell you something. Happy hour is lit. <laughs> you know, so I'm gonna let I'm gonna need you to stop talking about them nice people, right? You know I mean? Go on in there, yeah. enjoy yourself, something, man. You know, so, so if, if, if they get rid of happy, if they get rid of happy hour, Derek, you 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 coming back over to me? 
Look, look, happy hour. Listen, brother, th- that's an integral part of St. Patrick's Day, man. That's like taking a tr- Christmas tree out of Christmas, man. I'm telling you. Well, well, go ahead, Kelvin. Go ahead. I'm going to give my thoughts. You know what? First of all, I think people celebrate any excuse to drink day. That's, that's pretty much <laughs> yeah, what it is. is. That's but what I, it do, is. I do understand, I think, Rodney's point. Sometimes we need to understand the significance of people's heritage and kind of understanding sometimes we don't take that same pride in the things that we celebrate and the rest of the world doesn't always celebrate with us. We don't really have many days like that. So, you know, I think we need to start being a little more, you know, um, interested and concerned with some of the things that we need to do just as a community at large, because if not, sometimes our identity seems to get lost a little bit in other people's cultures and identity. Yeah, my my thing is like, if you want to celebrate a day like that, let's go back, let's, you know, I'm going to go back to the essence of, of the history of it. When they ran the when they ran the indigenous black people out of Ireland, Tua, I'm not pronouncing pronouncing right. Twa, it was short pygmy people. They had a snake, they had a snake crown on their hat. So that's what the reason why they ran. That's why St. Patrick's Day. My thing is, you celebrate a day just for drinking. They drink on Christmas. You drink on New Year's. Why don't they celebrate a culture day? They never celebrate anything with, with the culture of, of our people, or anybody else. You know what I'm saying? So they will have a better understanding of us and would treat us a little different. If they celebrate that. I don't need. There's no reason for Americans to get together to drink. They drink for fucking anything nowadays. So that I, I see that as a as, to me as a lame excuse. No happy, it's, it's, it's happy hour every fucking day. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you don't need to do it, but damn, you know what no, I mean? No. <laughs> I, I'm gonna that, that, that was the comeback that it did. Yeah, <laughs> like, you know, you know, you know what I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna tell you guys something from working on the police department on those St. Patty's celebration. Those um those drunken stupor day would lead into a lot of violent fights too. Exactly. So exactly. they would be they would that's why it would be such a detail even after the um St. Patty's Day parade because after the parade everybody would flock to the bars. Yeah. And then they would have all the cops on standby for the big fights that's going to break out from everybody being drunk. Now, I'm going to tell you what I don't like, and I got to say this, I'm not trying to talk about anybody in particular, but I do not like when certain groups of people or cultures don't particularly care for us, whoever mm-hmm. they may be, and then to actually do something to honor them, whoever they may be. And that that's something I'm very, very conscious of because I won't spend money with people that don't have regard for me, and I won't celebrate things that represent people that don't have regard for me, whoever they may be. That's yeah. the response. A- Amen. Amen, Kelvin. Yeah. And then, no argument out of that, man. Yeah, no argument so, from that. You know, you know? that's my thing. I, I, I'm, I'm, I would never celebrate St. Patrick. No, Irish, um, anybody, celebrate your own culture. I'm happy. All right, I'm just keeping it up. I, I, I can't hold this no more. I'm just be honest with you. I don't order food from the Chinese restaurants no more because when I was back in the day working in the youth ministry, the Chinese restaurants in the black community never support anything that Correct. the kids do ever. Correct. You never and support I, a basketball team. You never sponsor a football team. The Rochdale Rifles, nobody. And so as a result, all these men, because I told the people, I'm like, I never see anybody Chinese come in here and order anything. And yeah. all these people. So I'm I'm like, oh. Um, no, and Kelvin, I, and I was going to save that for later. And I remember when you and I talked about this a long time ago. But I'm a, I'm going to bring up this point again later on in, in the show in a few in a few other segments. So recently, uh, I don't know if you guys saw in the news. It was uh, this guy that killed his, uh, his significant, well, shot his significant, so killed the people in the house. Over not getting the stimulus check, is he wanted to split the the kids' check it was fourteen hundred dollars check. He wanted seven hundred dollars, and he killed shot killed four people in the household for this. What are you guys thoughts on that? And did you see it? Oh uh, yeah, yeah, I heard about it. Um, I'm, it's crazy because I think he killed four people, three people, three adults, and a seven year old. Yeah. Yep. Well, yeah, did he, he kill? Did a, no, he didn't kill the seven year old. He didn't. No, he, no, he killed, he killed a child, but he got he kept he kept his child alive. His, his child, his child, child was six months old, and right, but he right. killed another seven year old in the house. He killed a seven year old. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> but that, I don't know, man. Like when I hear things like that, the first thing I think is like mental illness or like a drug problem. You know what I'm saying? Because that's pretty freaking extreme over a stim a fourteen hundred dollars stimulus check. You know what I mean? Ah man, I just when you break it down, it's only seven hundred dollars. Yeah, well, you want yeah, to have break it down. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, yeah. You know. that's, that's a that's a tough story. I I don't know what his background is, but I mean, God, man. it was a history. It showed that she had a history of her complaining about this dude, uh, scared of him having a gun, and people knew that he had a gun and threats and stuff like that. So he knew this dude was not on. No, his his driveway didn't lead to the street. 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah that's what I say. Yeah. So, so usually those type of stories, there's some sort of mental illness involved in that type of stuff. But yeah. then when you but then when you add to that, like um just just a, a regular domestic stressor, which is money. You know what I mean? Like, you know, when you we realize that the number one killer of relationships is money. You know, so and the number one, and when you think of people who are, uh, when you think of domestic uh, violence or any kind of situation like that, is you know, it's always money related. You know, so yeah. it's you know, so it's, it's it's. I wonder how much of that, and you already have a guy who already was on tilt, and then you gave him some ammo on top of that. You know what I mean? Maybe it just was was a little extra. You know, it just pushed him right on over the edge. You know, so. It's, it's but you you know what? I think we gotta also we have to start looking at the signs early on and i'm talking about coming into relationships and dealing with people because what i'm noticing is a lot of people overlook the red flags early on and this stuff doesn't always just show up late you right. know what i mean you know there are people that will tell you there's a history there's a pattern even in getting to know somebody and so first of all i think we need to really try to get to know people um before we engage in relationship with them we don't do that as much but yes rodney the person is definitely mentally ill and there are certain things that I feel are just way even beyond that. Some stuff is just evil. It's just evil. There's just no other explanation for it. I'm sorry. Because it's, it's way past psychological damage to me. You know? But people will yeah. kill over money. We know this. People will kill over money. I'm, I'm Rodney, how many domestic violence situations did you see that were around, centered around money? You know? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, I'm going to say, Derek, you have a point. There's a, a lot of them are over money. And usually when you see a lot of domestic violence, sometimes alcohol is involved as well, too. You know what I'm saying? But a lot of the times in marriages and relationships, lots of times it is over money. Derek is def definitely has a point there. But at least some people will go for the, the long game. Like, what you yeah. in for? I'm in, I'm, I'm in for the rest of my life over $700. Somebody That's all I'm from being yeah. rich. Let me, let me <laughs> add to it. Let me add this. It's, it's lots of domestic violence and domestic issues that have to do with money is over irresponsible spending of money. You know what I mean? Putting themselves in, in situations that they shouldn't have or they could have avoided if they had actually thought it out first. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, he's going to have a long time. I hope he has $700. Somebody put $700 on his books while he's in jail. Yeah, he's going to ain't coming home. No, he ain't coming home. He ain't coming home. No, he ain't coming home. No, ain't so, coming home. so the, we had a tragedy in uh in down in Atlanta, Georgia this week. Um, A white guy came inside, started shooting up people in the different um, massage parlors across the Atlanta area. And he claimed that he, uh, the sheriff said uh, he had a was having a bad day. So thoughts, gentlemen. Wait, well, before we guys let's start, I want to apologize you to D because we talked about this earlier this week, and I thought that it was a statement that the uh, perpetrator had made. But no, it, no, yeah, you were correct. So I just want to apologize and just say you was on That's okay. that earlier. But first, yeah. but go ahead, sorry, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. First of all, let me say this. Uh, as one of my friends just reminded me about this tragedy that's going on. So I want to retract the whole Chinese food statement right now, first of all, because I think this, there's a lot of uh, backlash that's going on in the Asian community. And I don't want any community to feel um, that they're not being taken seriously or they're being discriminated against, because I certainly don't do that, although I still, you know, yeah, conscious yeah, of where I spend money at. But I want to say this, it's just a tragedy. And again, I say it, it's just evil. It's evil just to do that with it right now i think we're seeing epic proportions of mental illness i think we're seeing people lose it in different ways and i think it shows just how fragile we are as a society um one of the things that i'm very conscious of is not making um you know either materials or status or position some type of god i mean we come from a people that have had to do it out We've come from a people that have had to go through some things that, you know, this man had all types of excuses about why he did it. And then law enforcement has kind of painted this picture and give the man a soft landing. So what has set the Asian community off is this fact that it was, you know, summarily dismissed as just a bad day. Although he's not the one that um, the officer is not the one that said it. They're quoting him the way it's painted. You know, no, the, the officer said it. Never, the, the officer said it. Oh, so it was the officer's statement. Yeah, that's what I was yeah, just saying. Yeah. The officer's so the officer statement. Yeah. People never demonized for what they do with yeah. other cultures. Yeah. I got and, you. The, and the thing is, like, you know, how many black young men have bad days? And yeah. they don't get the, they don't get the tops. <laughs> I, had a bad, so, I had a bad day yesterday. I had, you know what I'm saying? So that's what I think the bullshit comes in when it, when white men always get an excuse to fuck up. And I'm tired of it. And I think everybody's tired of shit. And I think well, that's why the Asian community got upset. But I'm going to talk to the Asian community a little something else about why black folks ain't standing for them. A lot of black folks are standing. But that's another subject. And we're going to talk about that tonight. But the thing is, 
Why do white men always have a reason? Why do they always have to have mental illness? Why they can shoot up Vegas? Why they could go shoot up a club? And it's always got to come down to they have mental illness. That's the bullshit that yeah. we that our community never sees. That we can get like, oh, young yeah. black man yeah. went to, he went to rob some to some groceries and he had mental illness. And so that's why you illness. gotta make sure that yeah. you have a way of controlling your own media. Mm -hmm. And that's what we don't do. We, exactly. We don't do that. So so the people that frame the situations, those are the ones that are running it, and that's it. And no mm -hmm. one is going to make their community look bad if they don't have to. So they're, they're controlling the board and we have to do something to make sure that when we have an outlet or voice that we can get it out there. Yep. You know, and you know what the sad thing is also that a white man can go in, buy a gun the same day and kill the people, but people can't register the vote the same day. Yeah. Buy a gun, yeah. buy a gun in some <laughs> state at 18 years old on your yeah. 18th birthday. And then go kill up some people, but you can't go vote when you turn 18 the same day. They trying to stop. Just be real. Get the arrested. The black arrested. Black experience is looking kind of gray on this show today. I can't run. It's, it's looking, looking kind of bad. We don't know the thought. But no, but also it's another thing that's been trending on social media since we on the top of Atlanta. Like you know, they want all oh, they a lot of Asian community want black people come to be allies, and a lot of black people are saying like, hold up, you attack our women in nail salons, you attack our ladies in the beauty supply store. You know what I'm saying? So how they treat us in stores. So a lot of people's like, hey. This is on y'all. Well, what's <laughs> so, happening? What's happening to them? And like you now, said, they don't support. They don't support. Yeah. Like we, me and Chicken, we used to do a give back to community day. We just asked for a pan of rice. It was like no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's <laughs> happening to them now? We've been living for a long time. Welcome to yeah. our world. Welcome yeah. to our world. You should have yeah. been at the cookout. You yeah. supported the cookout. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So I understand. I'm not saying it's right, and I yeah. support. And I want nobody getting harmed and like that. But I do understand those folks that have that voice where they saying like. Oh, well, I understand it. Mm. I think and it was, I agree with it. I understand. And I, what I think was real sad about what about that, though, you know, we start talking about, you know, nail salons and, you know, all this stuff. I remember seeing a video one at one point where um, there was someone, you know, Asian person just totally disrespect these sisters, you know, in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the spot, you know, in the hair place. And then, you know, they were trying to, you know, some people came out, they were trying to pick it, and close it down. But then they open it up. They cut everything. They open back up. They cut everything by half, and you saw a line going down yep. the road. You know what I mean? And 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 one of the women, one of the young ladies, actually got into an argument with one of the guys who were protesting. One of the people who were protesting. He was like, "Listen, why are you going back in there? Why in this? You know why?" He's asking her, "Why are you doing this?" You know? And she just went off. He couldn't keep her. You know, just on um, just focus. Y'all trying to push me back to that argument we had yeah. about the business and ownership. That's what y'all trying to do. I see exactly what y'all trying to do. Y'all trying to take me right there. Y'all making right. my argument. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, uh, in recent weeks, this week, I know um, Little Mama has got a little a heated battle on social media. People trying to come at her. They try to come at the brother Reza Islam. I wonder if my man, uh, uh, yeah, Little Mama, oh. saying children should wait for the adulthood before they come and change their gender. Right, and um, I want to get you guys thoughts, but I can can Jamie, can you pull up the little uh, segment real quick that what little mom was talking about? So everybody. Can... So basically, my post, I was asking a question on Twitter, and I said, "Children can they're too young to gamble, too young to drink alcohol, too young to rent a car, too young to go to a club." These different questions, and I said, "But they're old enough to cut off their genitals and or change their gender." Right. It was simply a question. Just asking a question. So that's when I put that it's um it's be it's basically depopulation. So if you have little girls that like little girls, then you won't have children. If you have little boys that like little boys, then you won't have children. If you have little boys that's that right. think they're girls more so, and we believe in that notion without them even going through puberty or giving them an opportunity to figure out who they truly are, we'll have more confusion and less babies. That was my point. Now, when it comes to people who choose to be gay or choose to be lesbian or choose to change their sexuality with the mind frame of an adult and you're able to do that on your own, I don't have anything against you. I have gay family members. I have lesbian family members as yep. well as friends. Same. And I don't judge grown people who make grown choices. But when we're talking about these babies, we have to be very mindful about what they're being fed because if my niece comes to me and she say, Auntie, I want to be a boy. And I'm like, hi, right, Chinky. Oh, because I was watching a show with Sasa, and boys are very strong. They know how to shoot basketballs. They win when it comes to, like, tussling and little fights. And I'm like, well, it does, you don't have to be a boy for that. 
and I can explain some right. things to her that she may be confused about. But if she's telling me, I think that I am a boy, and she still feels that after she goes through puberty, I'm not going to label her insane. I'm going to listen to her, take heed, and support her. But we're talking about making children feel like they can make a choice of changing their genitals before they even go through puberty. You don't even know who you are or what you like. Young women right. are talking about BBLs and, and things like that before their breasts and their and their buttons are even fully developed. So we That's have to right. be very sensitive and mindful when we're dealing with our children. Yeah, so any thoughts, gentlemen, on that? Well, that's a lot. That's a lot to unpack. That's a lot to unpack. Well, let me I'll, I'll just say this. Um, I agree uh, that until a child comes of age, that parents need to be making decisions uh, for the children's long term uh, health and future. I think it's most important um, because, you know, when you're a child, first of all, um, I was taught in college that the brain, the human brain um, is not developed until age 25. Now, we obviously say you're deemed an adult at age 18. Uh, so as a result, I think before that, I think you need leaders or parents or, or guardians to kind of govern your life when you're at a young age. And, and I, I feel the same way about children getting tattoos or anything that may be permanent or have long term effects that you may not be mature enough to make that decision as far as your life experience is concerned. So I, I actually agree with her. And I understand that point. I think children kind of need to be protected from long term decisions, especially early on. They just don't have enough life experience in, in certain cases to make those decisions. And I, I agree with her. I agree. Good. I agree with Good. her because I think I think you should be 18. And then when they're showing it, and the data also shows that a lot of people, when they got at this young age, they want to revert back to what the original gender was. So that's what, the, like you said, uh, Kelvin, and the study showed that the adult brain doesn't fully develop till you're 25. I think we're making a lot of error. Look, think of the dumb shit we did when we were 18. 17. Right. I mean, I should still at the airport. Let's keep it above. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, a long time ago. A long, long time ago. A long time, right. long, long time ago. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's you know, like, you know. going through phases. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, so, yeah there could be, yeah. you know, you could be going through phases. You haven't figured it all out yet. You're still taking in all this information. A lot of it is, you know, really whacked. It just be, you know, obvious. Yeah. You know, but, the, but the thing that gets me also, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Rod. No, I was just going to agree with, I agree with what Little Mo was saying as well. The thing is, I'm a father of six, right? And my oldest is 22 years old. If if I didn't step in with certain decisions my 22-year-old wanted to make back then when she was maybe nine or 14 or 15, I mean, there could have been some seriously catastrophic mistakes if, if, right. if I wasn't a parent to step in and make certain choices and say, hey, nah, you're not going to do that. You know what I'm saying? So you... Children are not capable of making certain decisions like that. And the thing is, the way things are now, especially social media, the Internet and all this stuff, there's a lot of things that these kids are seeing today that we did not see on regular TV or were watching like like they do today. So the thing is, there is a lot more influence now with sexuality and on social media and stuff like that. But, yeah, I'm going to say she's right. A child shouldn't be able to make a decision like a child saying, well, I, I, I want to be a little girl and he's a boy and he's nine years old. I mean, he's incapable of making a decision like that. That's yeah. just that's how I see it. I think the Internet stops um, uh, parents from preserving the innocence of children. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. even think we consider the innocence of children anymore. Um, okay. Children shouldn't have to deal with adult issues now. So the things that we learned at 18 their understanding at eight now and it's just yeah. there i mean can anybody watch sesame street these days can, can anybody go back to is sesame company? street still on is that still I, still oh, on? yeah yeah it's, 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 right, it's, it's electric it's, company but i'm saying like, it's, it's it's like i don't even know they have you know what i'm saying i ain't seen big bird in, in forever you know what yeah, i'm saying yeah, and so yeah. i mean we need we need those things you know what i mean because you can do all that stuff and still can't don't know how to fill out an envelope and write a letter or something like that There's yeah something yeah that, you know what i mean uh, yeah, McCall so, made a point. She said they should do a study. You know, yeah, they people should. want to revert back. You know, I think. Yeah, and they, they have studies. They have some studies. I, I wish I'd have pulled it up. I should have. I should have did my research today and had the study from which um, when they show the studies to come, where they come from when they, they people want to revert back. You know, just think like yeah, like we said. And I want to say like all the brothers, we care what you do once you turn eighteen, like you go military or stuff like that, and the, the, what people live in their happiness. 
But I think as a child, I think we should just wait a little bit longer. And I think we should just wait let them, when they turn to yeah. adult. Yeah, Miss Lewis brought up a good point too. Today, parenting is different as well. Parents are trying to be their kids' friends instead of being their kids' parents. Right. But right. you know, like in my house, I don't care about being popular. They'll tell you in here. <laughs> Get it popping in here. They get out of line. I get it popping, and that's it. I don't care if you. You're not my friend. You're not my friend. You know. I, you know. Right. Sometimes it's just no. It's just a hard it's, no. That's it. And, no. Know, that's that's it. And sometimes yeah, because it. I said and that's so. it. Right. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? That was it. You know that was yeah. that was, yeah. that was, that was what happened to a, to a steam. Like like every time you know what I'm saying. Like everybody wants to go and 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 do things, and you know kids want to you know you know, plastic surgery and stuff like I listened yeah. to these girls that were 16 years old and they were like, oh, I can't wait till I get 18. That's when I'm going to get this done. I'm going to get that done. And I'm like, like to little mama's point, which I can't even believe I just said that to little mama's <laughs> point, <laughs> to little mama's point, you haven't even developed yet. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. yeah. And, and, and little your natural ones, they came in yet. I uh, mean, yeah. Look, you know, <laughs> It, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, you know, you got a point there, Calvin. Like I say, you see, they see, they just see so much stuff on the internet. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I got four girls in here. You know what I'm saying? And nobody better not come to me talking about they want their butt done at nine years old. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or 14 years old, 15 years old. You know, it's just, it's just out of the question. Because I explained to my kids, I said, you have more time in life to make all the decisions that you want to. And you know, when they first start, when you're out of here, then you can make all the decisions right. you want. Burr, you know right. what I'm saying? But until then, I'm running the show in here, me and mom, and that's the bottom line. You know what I'm saying? Right. But like, it, it's like with the girls, I definitely have to keep, we, we keep a, a, a stronger eye on them because of, you know, the self-esteem thing, because that affects girls faster, you know, with, than boys and stuff like that. Because raising boys and raising girls is definitely different. I don't, yeah. I don't care what it anybody say. I can argue that point all day. Exactly. It's definitely different. It's different. But I'm wondering if we need to start really looking at our boys too, because we have a tendency, tendency to tendency to say okay well you know let's be a little easier on the girls as men i guess you know because mm. you just said it right then you know and with again it's our boys that you're asking me no i agree but see the thing like the young men that have like you know my son has autism so it's a little different but the young men that have mentored over 20 something 21 years i bust they ass hard as hell because yeah. you you are the leaders of this community right. you know right. you women follow your lead and i, I make sure that you're going to be a man first because i grew up with nothing but men around me like strong men my uncles are dope my neighbors are dope. My pops was dope. So I don't know any other kind of way but to teach, to teach them how to be leaders first because they can't lead the community and lead them. Then we all fucked up Correct. straight up and down. So, you know, so we all, I, I know I'm hard on the boys. And, and Miko said she glad her moms made sure she was strict on her because she, otherwise she would have had tattoos on her legs and shit like that. She, <laughs> she, yeah. she would have been up here looking like Patra or some shit like that. Hey, yeah, you know, yeah. so funny that she said that it was so funny. When, when I, a lot of times when I would officiate a wedding, and it was inevitably you see a bunch of bridesmaids trying to hide the tattoo that they got from the nineties and this had the turn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Yo, why why did you get it? Oh, I was young then. Yeah, yeah. Was yeah. So you always, I was young then. In other words, my judgment then I thought it this was, was a fake. It, yeah, it was cloudy. Was cloudy. My, my judgment was cloudy. My name written here. Yeah. But, but fifty years, I thought it'd be hot back in the day. You know, ain't like a good uh, uh, tramp stamp in the back though. Ain't nothing like it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little twerk with a tramp stamp, ain't nothing like it. Man, it's gonna be a lot of eighty year olds walking around with tramp stamps, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, but it's gonna it's gonna be different. That's gonna be the norm, y'all. That's gonna yeah. be the norm. And they're gonna be wondering how the tramp stamp move from the top of their ass to the bottom of their ass. <laughs> <laughs> the worst thing gonna be. The worst thing is gonna be the oldies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the music that's gonna be considered the oldies. I know it's gonna be horrible. Oh, yeah, yeah, old, yeah, yeah. Uh, old bunch of old people twerking. Old bunch of old people twerking with straight with hard tits. With hard tits. <laughs> old, old, old. Oh man, <laughs> yo, oh my oh, god. Man. So, um, hey, this is something I just found out for the first time ever. The United Negro College Fund, first black president. A brother named Milton H. Jones Jr. I thought they would have had a black person from the gate. The <laughs> the the That's the I mean, the what the fuck? Yeah, <laughs> the only thing I know about the United Negro College Fund is they had good commercials. That's, That's it. it. Yeah. It's a That's great it. slogan. I never got a dime. I never. I don't know nobody got. You don't, don't know nobody, 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 nobody ever got, got a dime. You don't. We talked about this earlier in the week. We don't know nobody got a dime from nobody right. knows anybody. You know, does does anybody know anybody? <laughs> I, I'm being honest with you. This is this is just between us. Don't let nobody know. But I think that the United Negroes College Fund is into loan sharking. I think that's what they do on the side. That's what I think. 
They might be the, they might be running Yo, numbers. Let me let me tell you something. They, want the juice. they just something. want the juice. That's it. I had to sit there in the Bursar office in Virginia Union University with tears in my eyes. And this is like back in 1992. And they was like, look. Can your parents pay fifteen hundred dollars a month? I'm like, not that I know of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. like, like in other words, they ain't want to hear nothing about no United College fund. You know nah, what I'm saying? Nah. I, don't, I don't know a single. I don't know. I don't know a single person. I went to a black college. And I and, and Jamie and I did the tours of black colleges, and I still don't know anybody that received any money from. I don't know anybody that received any money from me. Either. Right up. Yeah. It's, 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 it's I know more incredible. people that got the McDonald's scholarship fund than I know about the United <laughs> Negro College Fund. What was the kid named Arnold? What was the name of the, the McDonald's company? I know Calvin. 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 Yeah, right. Calvin. Right there. Calvin. Calvin. It was Calvin right here. <laughs> His name is Calvin, God damn it. Calvin. <laughs> Just for the commercial, though. For the commercial. Commercial sake, right? Yeah, yeah for commercial. Uh, See, right now, I'm washing lettuce. Soon, I'll be on fries. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> That's, That's right. The big bucks rolling. Yeah, so I don't, I, right. I, I don't know. And then man. when I really get big, I'll be taking the garbage out to the back. <laughs> <laughs> that's like the Urban League. I didn't, Urban League sometimes they have a lot of brothers and sisters run Urban League. So that's a no. Yeah. But the thing that gets me, everybody can take all them donations quick. Yeah. Man. And don't but go away. I think you're about to go D. I don't even want to hear it. Nah, I'm nah. church. I don't want to hear it. Nah, I know, no, no. I ain't going to say it. Was, I'm leaving the church alone. I'm leaving the church alone. I need, I need some prayers right now. You know what I'm saying? So. I don't know. It's, it's, just, it's just funny with the United Negro College Fund. And they seem like they only donate those kind of funds only to the same few black schools. Morehouse, yeah. Spelman, Howard. Same three. Yeah. It was the legacy organization. Uh, it's the yeah. same. It's the Boule people. I'm not dissing because, you know, I'm going to used to bother about. me all the time. Yeah. Bill Cosby and <laughs> would be like, Oprah, Bill Cosby donated 10 million to Spelman and stuff. And I'm like, Virginia, you ain't got two books in the library. <laughs> <laughs> somebody took one of them out. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they gotta go. Come on, they gotta get. It's, it's 150. Was, I don't even know how many went down. There's 150. I'm not sure. 112. Circle Black College needed. Uh, don't be mad, D. Now I, I am mad. I am mad. I am mad. I'm furious because we got, we need some more. We got other schools besides the same three every single time. Yeah. Yeah, so did they get did they get the handball courts off those schools yet? <laughs> <laughs> Or no, I'm gonna raise. I'm gonna raise some money. I'm gonna. I'm gonna start. I'm, I'm gonna start um, a craps game and raise money for all the other historical black colleges out there in the world and a CeeLo game. For those CeeLo other- game. <laughs> now, I'll be there. You got me there. You got so, me there. I got the bank. Now listen. In, in recent times, I don't know if you've seen the trend, especially like Black Twitter and places like that, and the Black social media forums that uh, reparations for Black folks, and they have a, a debate that some. They have a lot of Caribbean black folks speaking out why black people, black Americans shouldn't get reparations and who should get reparations. So I want our producer, Jamie, to, to, to bring us in and to get people up to date so they can understand what we're about to talk about, see what they get their thoughts into. Ancestors come from the Caribbean, and there were okay. slaves in the so Caribbean, and we, okay, we didn't wouldn't really, qualify for this we, 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 Well, here's the challenge. There are so many difficulties with trying to enact reparations, in part because the question is, who gets them? Mm-hmm. Uh, potentially, I could fall into that category. I honestly have called a pipe dream in the past, and I think that's what it is. Well, it would be nice if there was an elegant, simple solution to all sorts of complicated problems. You're not actually talking about how to fix those problems if you're only talking about er- reparations. If we're only only debating how we're going to parcel out responsibility for something that happened more than a century ago. And we're probably never going to do this. It's not clear to me why we're, we're pursuing this thing. Is it fair that, that n- there's no kind of, there's no reparations, no restitution, nothing? Should but- the Irish get reparations, by the way? Irish need not, need not apply signs when they came here during the progressive era? Sure. I mean, how far do we want to take this down? Are we, are we acknowledging that there are ugly spots in history? Because 60% of the world would be entitled to slave reparations if you wanted to play that game. Well, here's a fact. Slavery ended 154 years ago. It's been a long, long time since we had slavery in this country. Uh, And you have people like my family. I'm black, but my family came to the United States in 1962. My parents are from Costa Rica. Do I get a check? I did a couple of essay contests that I actually won. And I won, like, NAACP Axel Award for this essay and something else. I can't remember another. Like, I ended up winning money. And the essay was... um, do you think black people should, have repara- should get repara- reparations? And I was like, no, you didn't work for it. Why are you so against reparations? Valerie, it's a matter of a waste of time. We've got so much to do. And yet you have people who invest so much energy and attention on what I consider to be a dead-end idea, a dead-end movement. 
If we were to pay reparations today, we would only divide the country further. We would insult many black Americans by putting a price on the suffering of their ancestors. Yeah. Well, if, if they don't, if they don't want it, if they don't want it, don't take it. Don't stop somebody <laughs> else from getting it. <laughs> I saw you know, a lot of, exactly. I saw you, a lot of people that's, that's hating. That's hating. Your talk. I saw a lot of people that need to mind their business. Maybe you know what yeah. I mean. It yeah. was like you know you you speaking on something that listen. You, I listen. You were enslaved. You got to talk about people who were enslaved by entirely different cultures. You know what I mean? Like we were enslaved in here in America was primarily <laughs> English. You know what I mean? But you know you got people who were enslaved by French or you know or, or Spanish or whatever. You know what I mean? So and go to those. And go to those countries and get their reparations. And go there, yeah, go there and get their, yeah, holler yeah. at them for your reparations. We Word. talking about what's going on here, holler at America. Now, yeah. whether or not you feel that uh, reparations is doable, maybe that's an argument that we can have, you know what I mean? But in, in terms of speaking on what somebody else should get, or counting somebody else's pockets, as we call it, nah. You know, you know what's so funny when people say if it's doable? We could find money to go to fucking Mars and figure out what to do with that kind of spending. We could do a whole bunch of other stuff but when anytime it's like black folks to pay us back for something, they was like, "How do we do that?" Like, you know, how about no interest loans or business loans? You know, yeah. how about like you know, what I'm saying like, how about fair housing that you're discriminated for so many decades to yeah. get that shit better? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's so many ways you could pay yeah. back people. Like, my sister and I are only the fifth generation, <clears throat> and you guys are too because we're the, like the fifth generation from slavery. Like yeah. most of us, most like, like most of us are born. Uh, Probably just after I don't know, Rod, you're the oldest one out of us. I think he was yeah, born. See, maybe. You didn't have to. You didn't have to say. That. <laughs> you, didn't have to say that. <laughs> you ain't have to say that, D. That well, was nice. I know. Nice. I just know the way it came off was. was I know. Rod, what year were you born? Right, sixty-eight. Come on, sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. 68. So Rod didn't have full civil rights either. Well, I mean, Rod, I mean, he's the first oh, one. Right, he didn't have. He, did full, yeah, he, was born, he was not born with full civil rights. Yeah, Nikki. I was me, Kelvin, and I think Derek right was born with. We was the first generation born with civil rights. My sister, who's sitting right over here near me, was born with no civil rights. Mm. People got to think yeah. about that shit. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, like, I think, <laughs> you know, I think I think one of the biggest things is this. I think you can start here. Maybe if you don't have a flag or a homeland to return to, we can start there. So, the benefit that the Caribbean community has, a lot of them still have the association with where they came from. We don't right. because right. we don't know where we came from. And so the people that were the here working for all these years, picking cotton and, and brought to the deep south and things like that. Now with the analytics and now with, with DNA testing, they can kind of figure out, uh, kind of pinpoint where people have come from. And I think they may need to start there. Uh, the, the reason I have a problem with um, the clips you just played, because it seems so dismissive, it just seems... Um, that people are not even concerned about kind of the collateral damage that has been caused uh, economically to, to, you know, just growing up seeing the way, you know, uh, Mississippi and Alabama and all these places look in the poverty. And you can actually trace that now to the projects in New York and in Chicago and in Detroit and things. I think something has to be done because there's no way to level the playing field, at least try to tip it so people can get somewhat of an opportunity and that's the issue so i think for people to just be dismissive because i think what happens is people want to give the impression that when you want reparations that you're lazy and i think that narrative is really really unfair and is inconsistent with the people that really spent their lives actually building this this country um really with no benefit and i think that's the the, the sad part about it mm -hmm. well yeah. enslaving another race to do some work for you that sounds lazy to me yeah, you know, right. Of course. So exactly. For them to say that somebody wants repro basically, we just want back pay. We want back pay exactly for what like we did. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? It's the American. It's the American way. Just get that back pay going. Every everybody but, else, the Japanese got con from concentration. They got reparations, right? The yeah. Jews still get reparations, right? You know what I'm saying? So like, why is that our time? When Candace Owens, she was pisses me off. I mean, sometimes she could be, I, but not nah, she pisses me off. No, but talking about no the credit. Irish, I don't give no credit. The yeah, Irish, no the Irish was in burn over here to work the fields. You know what I'm saying? Like they didn't have to like when they cream with they had creativity on making uh devices to help them like to work faster. They didn't get credit for that. So like, like the fuck out of here. Like, yo, she can eat a dick. Well, if I care about whoa, like, whoa. like uh, no, no, bro, bro, hey, listen, we on sense. But think about it, yeah. But if you sue it, like if you're gonna sue someone, why would you know like you what we're talking about is us suing. You know what I mean? If someone 
you're trying to be, it's reparations. You're trying to be repaired. You're trying to be made whole, you know? So that means that you have to go through a process, you know what I mean? And if we were to be able to sue, this is who we would sue. We would sue the American government or whoever it is. But someone else to be speaking on, you know, that process when it has absolutely nothing to do with them. You know what I mean? The person did not, the person that we're suing, all right, that we have a problem with had nothing to do with your history. You know, very little to do with your history. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So we're talking about something that's very, very personal and that has to do with us directly here. So I don't even know how you get the chance to speak. Well, well this I love, the thing. All love, now listen, all love to, 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 to my people over there. You know what I mean? But it, it's not about that. But this is this is something this is something that is that you're out of pocket. You know, and that's well, well, like well see to me, Derek, this is the way I, I look at it. So in, in cases like this, um, people will do to you what they can do if there's no repercussion or recourse. So the dollar that we control, if you want to pressure some of these corporations and things like that, which I think is the way to go, then we right. need to pull back from it. That's the that's the issue. And, and people, I don't think, are willing to sacrifice. So and if, if you want something, if you want demands met, then you're going to have to sacrifice something and you're going to have to pull back. And I think we we don't do that. We still spend money with everybody. We still keep yeah. giving and giving and yeah. giving. And if we could just say, you know what, forget it. These designer things, name brand right. stuff, and all the stuff that we make hot and fashionable, forget all of it. We're going to hold our money and tighten the purse strings. Then people will have to listen. If they don't, then it all is just be as noise and people continue to go like they've done. We yeah. get ignored because there's really, there's no recourse or repercussion there's no repercussion to offending us. Nothing. Mm -hmm. Right. No one loves America more than black people, man, here in America. You know, when you yeah, stop talking yeah. about everything that we've done, everything that we've given up for this place, you know what I mean? Just just to keep it as is. Like, we don't even want to upset the table. We just want a better seat. Can I please have a seat at the table? And can I? Can you someone please pass the whatever? You know what I mean? We just just basic stuff. And and, and it's like, you know, it's, it's no one loves it more than us, man. No one. I've never, I've never in America. I've never felt like an owner. I felt like a renter. I really yeah, do. No, I, 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 was, I wasn't raised to be patriotic. And my father and my grandfather served. I just right. wasn't raised to be patriotic. I know I don't own anything with the flag on it because I just never felt that it represented me. I know even with the um, standing up, saying the pledge of allegiance. I, you know, that part about liberty and justice for all. I'm like, you know, yeah, that's, that's and, and yeah, my, yeah. Yo, my yeah. sister schooled me to that game years ago, and she when I'm, I think we went to a Knicks game. And she was first, like, sit your ass, Nick's the Mets, I can sit your ass down. And I, and I, I, so I was like, listen, she, listen, my sister got, kept me woke a long time ago. Woke me up from a nap and I've been up. <laughs> yep. I, said, I will say we yeah. need to probably be more pra pragmatic, though, about, about how we, how, about how we do things in regard to our patriotism yeah. and everything, you know. I think now's the time, of, you know, maybe we need to all buy in and just use this, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah you know what I mean? So, yeah. Yeah, yo, it's, it's empowering to hold that dollar. Oh man, it's so yeah. it, 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 it is. So it, it, it is. Out of a it is. Or you can house. cripple. You can cripple things if we hold on to that dollar and not give our dollar. But we've had this conversation many times before, guys, about how America has designed the African American race to be a consumer. Right. But I want to speak back on what how I feel about the um, the video. Like me, I think it made me think a little bit different. Like when I see black people up there, you know, making statements like that, I get suspicious. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm saying like, what's your angle, dude? Like, what's your angle, right. sister? Mm -hmm. What's your angle, right. brother? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, what are you getting out of this? Because you got to understand something. And, and you, you, when we watch this last administration, how certain black people were used, used right. to basically go out and put out certain talking points right. so that certain parties can say, hey, look, black people don't even want reparations. Reparations. We don't want to, we don't want to give it to them. They don't want it. You know what I mean? And that's what they, that's what they do. Because the thing is, like, why you go out your way, sit there and say, you want to make a speech about stopping reparations, stopping something that could probably advance a lot of black people. Yeah. You know that's what I'm saying? Like, that's why I say, I look suspicious. Like, what's your angle? What's yeah, your angle? Yeah, like somebody this? said, Uncle Ruckus, and I, you know, I just got out of Facebook jail. For saying calling somebody a coon, so I'm the first, my first day out, none of y'all send me money on my books from Facebook jail. So I'm just like, that. <laughs> no, no, I coon, did. So I, no, I, D, I, I sent you some naked books. They on the way. <laughs> <laughs> it's my fourth time in Facebook jail, yeah. but any, anyway, Cardi B, Megan Thee Stallion, they did a performance at the Grammys, uh, Grammy Awards, and people had to speak out. Candace Owens was one of them. Her and Cardi B went back and forth. I don't know if you guys saw that on uh, on Black Twitter there. And um, what are your thoughts with the way the performance, if you guys saw it, I only had to see it, I only had to see it on social media for one thing. 
And what, what and she's saying, like, black women could do better. Basically, that's what Candace Owens' point was. And Dr. Boyce Watkins had a few things to chime in on. What are you guys' thoughts? Maybe a broken clock is right. Even a broken clock is right twice a day. Twice a day. Well, I think we, we are in a really overly sexualized society, right? I mean, it's obvious. What I always felt is this. Whatever, you know, is regarding sex, there should be some discretion toward it. And um, the power of music and music video and performance is, is so powerful across the board. I did see the performance. I checked it out. Um, to me right now, there is nothing uh, shocking anymore, shocking anymore. I don't even think it, it you know, to, to me, I'm desensitized to it. I think their bigger issue probably is how it affects kids. And I think it's unfortunate because we, again, we cannot, there's nothing that is preserved for kids anymore. Um, I'm not a Cardi B fan. I know very little about uh, Megan Thee Stallion. I don't. I'm not a fan of it. I'm not a fan of the music. I'm not. A, I, you know, when it comes to to um, hip hop, I think for for years it may be unfortunate. I think they've they've had women go out there and think the only way they could make it is to just be sensuous and sexual. And and that's why I really love the Miseducation album by Lauren Hill. I wish we had more females that could just spit it like that and, and, and tell you something thought provoking. I was not a fan of the performance. Um, and I, at the same time, I wasn't overly critical of it because it's the norm. I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah. It's and, don't everywhere the, so. and don't you think when you said that about the Lauren Hill, Calvin, I think it's the balance. Why can't we have the balance? We had sexual records way back. We had the Red Foxes. We had the Moms right. Maybe. Mm -hmm. We always had those kind of things. We had Just Ice and our everyone. He talked about you know, the kind of Slick Rick, Toya, yeah. you know, Toya, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. My thing is, why can't we have the balance? Like, it's a lame for Cardi B. Like, when we, back in the day, long time ago, kids, before you know, they used to have a porno section in the video ritual spot. So they had the adult section. You had your arm. And it was closed off. It was closed off. <laughs> it was closed off. off. What right. 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 Yeah, I don't know. I, I witnessed it. I never witnessed so, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. It had a it had a curtain. It had a curtain. Yeah, you, know? you got to go back further. Kids, there used to be a video store. Yeah, yeah. 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 They got as they got a documentary coming up about Blockbuster too. That's so crazy. So you know, you had those sections where you had a variety. Now it's just like only thing is women artists got to be fucking strippers, and that's what I think the problem is. And it's what is it? What's the message that you're telling young girls? That there's not a balance. Like, okay, women could be sexual. Like, boom, like you said, we had Little Kim, we had, and we had um, Sister out there, right? So we had um, Lauren Hill. Why can't we tell them that you can have both? But that was just thing. Like, only thing you could be is a fucking stripper. And you got to have wet ass pussy. Like, you know, why can't like you know why can't I have a, a smart ass brain? You know yeah. what I'm saying? Why, you know what I'm saying? Like, like, because what, what's that doesn't wrong? sell. That doesn't sell. It, That's it, why Lauren Hill sold more records than all of the motherfuckers. Right. Uh, yeah. First of all, let me say this. First of all, <laughs> there, there, there is no rehabilitation. You're gonna wind up back in Facebook jail, first of all. I, mean, yeah, yeah, I, 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 mean, just, I don't know. I just I have a feeling. I have a feeling but, but no. No. Fuck Facebook, man. And, and then you know the thing is, because he's my brother, I'm gonna have to go get him out every time. He's there you go. I'm gonna Jamie put us. Jamie, Jamie, man, you just on that. Man, it was good for a few weeks, man. <laughs> I, I think this is the thing. You know, I kind of look at um, when you when you grow up and you have this curiosity about sexuality, right? And so all of us, you know, you're growing up, you're trying to see little things and, and figure out all these different things like that. I used to do stupid stuff. This is how I got caught. So I, I was a big hockey fan. I grew up on Long Island, so I was a New York Islander fan. So I was just trying to take a picture of the TV screen, right, to see and tell my friends that I went to the Islander game. That's why I was trying to lie and say I went to the Islander game. Well, I found a way to turn to the Playboy channel and took a picture of women and men on the Playboy channel. Back then, you had to go take your photos to Photomat and have them developed. Like a fool, my mother goes and picks them up. Like a fool, I don't think that them pictures are in there. My mother sees the picture of people having sex on the screen, and my mother's like, this is not my son's stuff. Then the next <laughs> picture is the Islander game. And that time, she didn't have a belt. She picked up another kid and beat me with them. Right? So, <laughs> so, so I just want to, I just want to say all of this only sexual stuff or whatever like that. Kids, do yourself a favor. Take your time. Wait to get older. It's going to be there. Yeah. But see, just like every you, every one of you described, right? You guys had to search to go find it. You don't got to search no more to go Not find anymore, it. Not anymore, man. It's, um, it's everywhere. You know what I'm saying? You and, turn and, it on. Correct. It's so easy to find now. It's like you like you were saying earlier, you know, you're not a fan of Cardi B's or whatever. 
you know, I'm I'm not a fan of Cardi B's either. I mean, I wouldn't want my my daughters looking at Cardi B as a freaking role model or anything like that. But the thing is, like, they they feel that only they want to paint a picture. The only way that a black female can be successful is Definitely. to be sexual or Absolutely. to reveal her body or whatever. Because let's look at it. Let's look at it. The truth. And I'm not knocking Cardi B's success or whatever. Hey, God bless the sister. She made, she made, she came from from a rough, rough era, rough time, and then she turned her life into something. But the thing is, they're just trying to, you know, paint this picture to the youth that you can only be a whore, or a slut, to be a success. And I got that's the thing I have a problem with. Well, my other part, my other part that I would say that also is. There's this idea, and I've seen it a lot. I've seen it happen with um, Rosie Perez. I've seen it happen with the the lady that's on that um the show. Um, I think uh, it's like this this mixed families and all this stuff like that, where it's like if you're Latin and you have like an accent, then it becomes embellished. Oh yeah, I know you're um, about all these different. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like it's, it's 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 all these different things that they just throw at you. So Cardi B, to me, I doubt goes into business meetings with that you know, vernacular and all those different things like that. It's always this idea I'm from the Bronx and I'm this, that, and the third. I'll be honest with you, I don't like it when when Tiffany Haddish does it, get in front of a, a, a room, the Oscars and stuff and, and do all this stuff. Like, I just don't like it because again, people paint us into that 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 corner. And there's certain people that, that I think eventually you have to say, you know what, I'm not willing to kind of sell out to do that. And it's up to you to do that. But taking all your clothes off just because you got a microphone in your hand and all these different things like that, I just think it's 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 something that they'll pay you for, but I'm a I have to quote um my man Robin Townsend. There's work at the post office. Yeah, yeah. Tonight we got good like you know, Mary. I agree with your sister in the comments. Um, Nikki and stuff like that. Adults. There's a lot of comments, but um, um, for the sake of time, ladies and gentlemen, we have to move to the thing. But there's some great comments, man. We definitely see your comments on there. We try to bring maybe bring them at probably towards the end of the show. So. And next thing I want to, I want to bring up is like uh, the talk, the show they go on hiatus with Sharon Osbourne, the thing she said about Holly Robinson Pete, and then they were calling, I think, Ghetto or something like that, or something like that. So, you know, you got this rich white woman from Europe not, not understanding a culture, and, and she's saying, like, she don't understand racism. I'm like, you Europeans created the shit. <laughs> so, like, yeah. you know, so, like, y'all started, y'all had class 101. So That's where the racist, the racist union started. That's what they were giving you know what out union cards. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. What are your thoughts on Sharon Osbourne and uh, Holly Robinson, Pete, brother? The the thing is, like, I mean, I mean, I'm excuse me for being a little bit lame on this, but is it Holly Robinson, Pete, or was it Cheryl Underwood, or both? That she had oh. an issue with. Oh. She had a issue with both. Well, Cheryl, Cheryl Underwood had oh. like a queen. Cheryl Underwood. I was saw like the Cheryl queen, Underwood one. With it. With a I queen. did not. See I didn't see the Holly um, Robinson Pete one. Yeah. I saw the Cheryl Underwood one, and I liked the way that Cheryl Underwood did it. And what she did say to Cheryl Underwood was insulting, like saying, "Oh, don't cry," you know, yeah. like basically saying that she was going to be looking for pity. You know, what I'm saying as I guess being a black woman or or what have you. Yeah, I, I thought that was crazy and that was insulting and it was insensitive. You know, what I'm saying mm -hmm. it shows a lack of education that Miss Osborne has. Exactly. You know, and go ahead. if you might yeah. like. But the thing is, like, you know, white women can always cry in the workplace or anywhere, and everybody comes to the aid. Look at the white boy that shot up people. They, they, he fucking, he got mental, and they come to his aid. Like, yeah. you know, white, they always get somebody to come to the aid. The, the, white, the white boy shot up people in Wisconsin. They come to the aid. Like, she literally was about oh, to do, she, she tried to throw it on her, like, like she became the victim now. Like, no, yeah. this white yeah. dude said some real racist shit and has always been going after this sister when he's going to uh, Meghan Markle. And, like, and his sisters came to her aid. And now yeah. you white women gonna use the tears. And now instead of the thing is this whole fucked up with the show to me is they put it on hiatus because they they protecting her again. Right, correct. White woman again. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a protection right. of her again. Like putting the show and, on hiatus. And like we talked about this earlier the week. If I told you, I bet you if you follow the money, Miss Osborne makes the most money on that show. Yeah. Yeah. So I guarantee you that's why they did a hiatus instead of firing somebody. Exactly. Exactly. Why you know, are the Osborne still around? That's what I'm trying to figure out. I, I don't know how they still became relevant. Had, I mean, when I was a kid, Ozzy Osborne was drinking people blood and spitting in he's cups biting, at concerts yeah, and he's biting, biting back the head, head off of that. Yeah, yeah. stuff like that. How they became yeah. this like big like marketing family, I don't know. But um, again, it's 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 really just people really do not care about. 
our plight and and people see us less than human and I, I, and again to my point earlier you've got to make them feel it like you got and, and another thing is the real the view the <clears throat> talk the whatever i just it just, just exhaust me and just i got to admit it, to it me it seems exhausts. like it's all the same play it's all the same show man you know what i yeah, mean it, it and unfortunately you know um you, you you have a you have a situation where you know she's going to she's going to Osborne, she's gonna sit around and she's gonna pretend that she's this, you know, like she's this victim, you know, and and, and, and Nicole. Yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, Nicole. But you know, she's gonna be this victim. And, but and, victim and, culture is very big right now. Victim yeah, culture is, is very oh, yeah. big. Yeah. Yeah. Well, victim, we, yeah. victim culture and cancel culture are both they run it, 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 exactly. You you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of in sports, it reminds me of flopping. There's yeah. some no, false alignment with soccer. sisters, though, man. Yeah. Right. Right. False Somebody, alignment with sisters under this, you know, this right. whole thing. Feminism, so and it's I'm, yep. You gotta wake up to that, man. And you know? cancel culture called me again at Facebook. Fuck you, Facebook. No, I'm just, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's, it's, <laughs> the views yeah, are I'm coming out of my mouth. I'm gonna have to you out again. Mark Zuckerberg, you my man. I love you, man. Y'all see it at the cookout. But anyhow, I was born in early, so, early Kardashians. <laughs> facts, facts. I was um, born in early Kardashians. Yep. So listen, I don't <laughs> know if you guys saw in the Breakfast Club recently, they, it had a segment talking about um, a men gay if they have if they get. This thing called pegging. I'm explaining pegging, and I'm gonna let, then. Um, well, actually, the video explains pegging, but pegging is when a woman straps on and she has uh, anal intercourse with a man. So, Jamie, can you pull up a little segment real quick? Even the conversation we have a lot with men and bisexuality, like men just be like, "Nah, he gay." It's like, well, no. why, why it's are deeper we... than dick? It, it's, it's deeper, deeper than, than dick. dick. Fluidity is a I real thing. That. It's just that we've been conditioned to think that your masculinity is in your booty hole, and it's and not. It ain't. <laughs> what? <laughs> Like men feel like you know if if I have sex with men, I mean they going I'm, I'm a top or they're not gonna fuck me in the ass and it's like, what? Who cares? Yeah, your manhood is not defined by the access to your Buddha hole. That's Rick, right, Peg the Stallion. Wait, that's yeah, a, that's that's a, that's power that's to the Peggers. That's a chapter in the horrible decisions book. I need to hear more. <laughs> so pegging is a term coined oh, by a man named Dan Savage. It's when some woman puts a strap on on and penetrates a man. And um, pop culture has shown it, like, shout out to Broad City. I think that was, like, the first time people really got to see it. Mm -hmm. And then over time, like, when we first started our show, Mandy was like, we can't talk about this. Black people ain't ready for this yet. (laughs) 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 Yo. And we're back. Wait, wait, I'm sorry. How you guys? Uh, what is wrong with everything? What is wrong with us? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Kelvin, listen, don't let this take you to your end, man. Kelvin, that was funny. My fault. My fault. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to be crying, man, on camera, man. That's hilarious, man. So, where brothers. We, where do we start with this? How about this? Do you to Mm, Nicole, how were decisions be out of control? I used to listen to one of their podcasts until they started getting to this. I was like, nah, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> this is like, you know, let me let me explain something, right? She said that his ma- their masculinity, your masculinity is not in your booty hole, right? As soon as she gets that booty hole, guess what? She's gonna look at that man differently. His yep. masculinity ain't gonna be gone. there no more. Me, it's gone. gone. Think about know, this. So, go ahead, and go the thing right, is. Right. They're normalizing this. This is what they're doing. They're feeling like, you know, and the thing is, that was the short version of that video. Yes. She went on and said some other stuff that was really far left, like saying that 65% of men do this, yeah. that they want to get pegged. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's that's extremely freaking high number. And that's, I, I, I don't. In her, in her, but she did say in her, uh, whatever, she, she, didn't, she, didn't have a, she didn't have a direct, uh, you know, so her, so her, so her that was her, her impression. How, that well, her impression I, I, that's right. scary. Her impression is scary. But I the think, thing I is, think, too, yeah. that is a demasculation campaign. And, yeah, and, and that's it. And, yes. and, and, yes. and, and let's right. go. Let's yes. let's strip it. Let's strip it back a few years on that too. So when you think about how they did, how they um break break down strong black men, what they call what they call buck breaking. What buck did they do? Breaking. Correct. They they yeah. raped them in front of. All the women, all the male children, and other everybody. slaves, and other exactly. all the other slaves, and they demasculized him. Yes, yes, yep. Well, so it's that's like, it's exactly crazy. what pagan was yep. about. Yep. Well, they're doing that. They're doing that. that to bu- us now. I mean, sorry, butt break, buck breaking. That's buck breaking, buck breaking, yeah, buck break. That's yeah. what's going back then. They, they're trying to do that to us then. now, virtually. If you ask me, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. With all of this conversation about sixty-five percent of this and butt plugs and and toxic masculinity and all this other stuff that's happening, you know what I mean. 
But yeah, what yeah. I understand is when did this big meeting occur? One day I'm up there as a kid trying to sneak and look at Playboy books. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Next minute, like all this stuff is going on in the world. I, I, all I can say is this, and I, I'm not, you know, I'm not aware of all the different things that's going on. All I say is this: all I knew and all I know is the love of a woman. That's it. And so, to me, it was th there wasn't too many lanes. Now it's the super highway. Before it was one lane going this way, one going lane going that way, and that was just it. And so I'll say this: all I know is, is. Uh, that what she just described to me is is I have no interest in it. I have no understanding of it, and um, I'm not associated with it, and don't care to be. You know what I'm saying? But how you perpetuate that and make it like it's the norm. Um, could not be further from the truth because I just yeah. I, I have no no understanding of it or I don't agree with it, you know. And the dudes that's into that, I don't I don't I don't understand why. But well, like I can say it's and not me. Thing. I mean, not I, the I, kid. yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, the yeah, thing is, that, yeah. I, I couldn't even imagine having a conversation with a woman like that about something like that. Like, right. like, 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 yeah. What, what do you mean that you want to? Ah, I can't even say that shit. They used to say a lot of stuff. They used to say a lot of stuff came home from jail. Uh, yeah. I mean, you know, they said a lot of stuff came home from jail. Like a lot of stuff that happened, people doing long bids and stuff like that. And, you know, again, you know, I know a lot of people that have gone to jail and came home, especially in the 90s, but um, been upstate or been real far away. And they used to say some of those things that people did. Uh, and then when they got back, they, they continue to do it. And I don't know how... Yeah. You know how many people that, are, but the the stats about sixty five percent or something like that. Yeah, listen, know. listen, it was a shocking thing though. I have friends, homegirls that had dudes that uh would, would get perform fellatio on them, and then they would want to plug them in the uh, put their finger in their booty. And I had a home that first time I ever heard this shit. This was in the eighties in high school, and I said, "Bro, you bugging? I I can't even see it. I'm a brother that suffered from hemorrhoids. I know how hard it is. <laughs> so, like, I don't know. You play around out of nowhere, man." <laughs> You know, like you I know, me <laughs> is when, 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 when you had to used to yes. go get the yes. prostate exam. I used to oh, have yeah. to it, 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 it have a moment to myself just that. Then yeah, the doctor yeah. would have a consultation. I'd be like, "Well, man, I'd like you to leave because yeah, I yeah. want to like you know what I'm saying." And you so go the, you go downstairs, sit in your car, and try to get yourself back <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious, I can't yeah. front. It's serious. Yeah. It's always a conversation yeah. uh, before. <laughs> like I can't lie, but, but no, I, I think right now it's just getting extreme. And I just think I think you know what it is. I think we we are just <laughs> heading to a anything goes society. Yeah, that's yeah. It. And then yeah. the other thing that and I then think you have to go already there, man. And it, and, and yeah. if you don't and, and see this, is what I don't like. If you're not for something, then then people gotta you know kind of vilify you because you, correct. You know, every yeah, time you say, yeah. it. I think that's the you know what I'm saying. I'm not for that. You know what I'm saying? I'm not with it. And so that's just what it is. But people want to be mad at you because you're not like people. Are, oh, you're not open minded. There are certain yeah. things I'm not open minded to. Yeah. I'm just close minded to that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's enough. I'm not, the bathroom, but then, yeah. I'm not open minded and I'm not open butted. None of that. The thing is, <laughs> I'm not with it. We're not, okay. not with it. Okay. Okay. So, 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 so now, Derek, you got to go get both of them out because you're going to have to. <laughs> There's something we're not thinking about too, right? Think about all the guys that used to date those two girls. What does that just reveal about them being on that show? Mm. But yeah, but the thing is, one, think thing, about that. one thing I got to say with them, they never use names. So hopefully like those, and, and you got to be a real trusting dude. To do that kind of stuff, you know what I'm saying? With, with, like, the you have chick to be a is real... gonna tell. She's gonna look at you differently. Oh, I, <laughs> you know I, what I'm saying? I, she's gonna I, tell. I they're telling. They want. They want the Breakfast Club <sighs> telling that that's what they do to dudes. The night is over. The minute something like that happens, the night is over. The whole experience is done. The ride. We might be onto something. What's that? And when when they have the the, the Halloween or Christmas Christmas tree parade, we should get uh, open butted t shirts. I'm no like, sell them out there. We could get them and sell them. Open butted. <laughs> okay, he gonna get the electric chair with face. Yeah. Like, no, I'm not, just joking. I'm joking. Listen, listen. We having a little fun. You know, I'm just having a little fun. Just having a fun. Opinions of the mind do not reflect the opinions. Oh, and there you have it. <laughs> but you know, come on, reform tonight. 
<laughs> but listen, man, before we bring our first our next guest on the show, Jamie, take us to commercial, man. Take us anywhere. <laughs> 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 Welcome back from after the break here. So our first guest tonight, a lot of things, a lot of things been going on like in the black community, like we've been talking about lately, especially amongst women and we, you know, women's history month and stuff like that, is that the changing of how to deliver our children into this world. So I know a lot of my friends have been recently researching and doing these studies about having birth doulas, having natural childbirths because of some of the things that their friends have witnessed in the, in the hospital, the things they were going through in a, in a regular traditional hospital. So I want to just bring into attention, like, you know, we're a show of awareness and we are, let's chop it up and we have barbershop talk. So this time, the brothers, I want to bring in our first, our only guest tonight, actually, Yasmin Garcia, our birth doula. This is my homie. And Jamie, can you bring in Yasmin, please? Yazo! Hey, Yasmin, how are you? <laughs> what up, what up? How you what doing, up? Yasmin? I got the young you, king with you, you tonight. Just, you, you just had a baby tonight? <laughs> <laughs> A year ago, in a few days. Yeah. Oh, okay. little man about to be one years old already. Yeah. Wow. Wow! Congratulations. Congratulations, yeah. So good. Congratulations. So yes, tell some of the some of the things that, that you've been doing. Like you know, um, tell people what a what is a birth doula. People might not know what a, a birth doula is. Back in the day, we called it a midwife. When like my family, a lot of people were born to midwives. I think my producer Jamie was born to a midwife. He might have been born on the floor or something like that. So you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, oh, hey, yes. What, there's something in the background is a little loud. We may not be able to hear you. Just want to see something. Oh, no. a T. It's a TV. Yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. He's a TV. Is the baby's cartoons trying to? Um, Here we go. Making sure he's a little distracted for the few minutes. Oh. Um, hi. So thank you for having me. I'm Yen Teresa. I am a traditional birth worker. Um, we don't really we're using the word doula anymore in okay. our community okay. because it is no, it's all good. I'm going to teach just in case we don't know that. But it's mainly because it is a uh, a Greek word for slave, and they try to switch it for women who serves. But traditionally, birth workers do much yeah. more than just yes, yes. Hold on one second. I think the, the headphones are not, they give up going in now. Can we? I have to get up the headphones. Yeah, that's because so people, I want people to hear all this good information. I want to hear everything. Yeah, I want to hear everything you got to say. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Yeah. Let's start all over. Yeah. That's good. That's good. That sounds great. Yeah, because it's breaking up a little bit, but um, I think I could still hear you guys. So yeah, okay. I'm a traditional birth worker, mm -hmm. and in Greek, um, in in Greek. 
they they use the word doula. So as traditional birth workers, melanated Moabite people, we've been doing this for the beginning of time or else none of us would be here. It's a very, the oldest profession, not prostitution, right? <laughs> so um, it is something that we do to ensure um, we are the gatekeepers of life and death. We ensure that babies and humanity continues to be produced um, into this world. We hold space for women and families. Um, we educate um, emotional, physical, we're there physically, we educate about the process of preconception, conception, and postpartum recovery period for women and their families and how to really get acclimated on having a new baby, whether it's your first or your fifth, traditional birth workers are always necessary. And midwives are what we know to be the birth workers of back then, although they're so prevalent today and they still work today, but because there's such a high demand for midwives, which is the medical practitioner who helps the babies be born and making sure mommy is healthy, um, we have kind of extended a different position that is the birth worker that assists usually the midwife in the process and assists the mom through her journey um, where the midwife might not be able to come in all the time. So it's still the same, it's, the midwife is still relevant today it's just, there's such a high demand that now we have more like the birth worker who's the personal coach for the mom and the family and preparing them. And then the midwife comes in just to do the monthly and weekly checkups to ensure that her health and nutrition is all good. Um, and the traditional birth worker is, like I said, just pretty much the coach, emotional, physical, mental, spiritual, and really the gatekeeper of the person's tradition and culture as it pertains to birth. So, so yeah, as I know you probably seen some, like, you know, a lot of guys and they go in there, they pass out or whatever, you know what I'm saying, like that. So how can, how can brothers be more supportive in the work that you do? Um, this has come up a lot for me, especially during this whole pandemic. Um, one thing we need to understand is that birth workers are not taking the role <laughs> they're not taking the role of the man. You know, they're not taking the role of the partner to show up. They're really showing the partner how to be more supportive. And men tend to just naturally expect women to be nurturing and caring and take care of the house, their emotions, listen to them, rub their feet after a long day of work, which y'all deserve it. But when a woman is pregnant, it is such a sacred time. It's probably the only time that she has to make it about herself. And it's very important that as men, we start to, um, we, hold on, y'all start to <laughs> really honor, you know, this sacred time where a woman is becoming, you know, a physical example of God himself, God itself, you know, we're birthing humanity and um, men need to really know how to hold space. And what that looks like is making, making sure that she's right mentally, emotionally at home, things are being taken care of. If you have to tidy up, if you have to clean, if you got to cook, Sir, you better learn because that's a one of the rules of survival. You, you, you know, know you know. If, if I can <laughs> ask you this question, and it's something that you just said. Um, I always thought about this. There was a time when a woman was pregnant that people treated a woman with a certain level of respect. That was, you know, and people giving up their seat on a bus or opening the door, or things like that. Do you see people now just kind of taking this this moment for granted a little more? Uh, for whatever reason, maybe just not knowing or not being concerned. But I mean, as you just described, it is a very serious time when you're carrying life inside of you. Do you see people now that it has kind of diminished actually kind of the sanctity of, 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 of motherhood? I absolutely see that there's a disregard for women and more so the value of family. And understanding that how a woman is treated when she is pregnant, that is going to have further implications on her mentally, but also your your seed. It's going to have implications on these babies from utero up until their adults. So if we're really questioning, sorry, my baby. Let him do, let him do his thing. He's doing his thing. Yeah, it's all right. If, all right. if we're really questioning why we have so much unbalanced humans and adults we really have to consider how they were treated in utero how their mom was treated while she was pregnant how she was supported you know one of the things that came up recently i read how um Ilyasa shabazz the daughter of, Mar of 
Malcolm X had mentioned that her mom was pregnant with twins um, when the father was uh, murdered, mm -hmm. assassinated. And if I remember correctly, one of the stories I heard about the twins, the siblings, and with all due respect to their family, uh, was that they had a lot of issues, you know, mentally and just um, there was a lot of chaos amongst the family as they were, you know, in their adolescence and turning into adults. And I could only imagine what the stress upon that mama when she was pregnant with two, which is a very magical, you know, calling. Not, you know, pregnancy is magical, but with twins, that is very sacred um, in many traditions. So to know that they struggled later on mentally, it's just a testament of like, we need to really be careful. Um, but I think it starts with how we treat ourselves, how we treat um, our, how we express our values and family. And it starts with us as individuals. If you do see a woman, you know, honor her, you know, praise her and worship her for carrying a baby. That's a high calling within itself. Yes. And, um, yeah, just to answer your question, I think that's our job to change the society, um, in which we're living in. We're being taught and programmed to not give a, a damn, but I think it's for us to be like, no, 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 she matters. We need to you know, protect her. <laughs> he wants to see <laughs> what's going on. <laughs> you remember the moon? Yeah. What's up, man? I knew you in the belly, baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yo, let me sorry. let me ask you a question. The thing is, like, you know, excuse my my lack of knowledge about you know what it is that you do, mm -hmm. but like I've seen films of people giving birth at home, right? Mm -hmm. And usually, like, in swimming pools and stuff like that. Like, is, is that exactly how it goes down or that's just, you know, certain type of um, deliveries that people do at home or there's many different ways? So um, there's many different ways. And I'd like to always answer that with water is a form of therapy mm -hmm. it's called hydrotherapy. And it's an element in nature in which we worship and honor because it's therapeutic and it nourishes us. So it's something that's often used as a method of relaxation. However, you can plan to have a water birth because you feel the call to, to be more relaxed with, in connection with water. But it can turn out that within the moments of wanting to push or within the process, you decide to go lay down in the bed, to go inside the closet because somehow you feel safe in the closet or familiar mm. or you want to be in darkness. So it's very different when you're at home, you're really free to birth anywhere and i remember in my experience giving birth to my twins at home i came out of the pool halfway and i i really just walked around everywhere and squatted a million times dislocated my hip in the process you know wow. happens. but it really depends we, we can't categorize birth in one way because it's really for what the woman needs and what makes her feel comfortable at the moment all right so basically the mom determines her own birth basically it's so instinctual, a woman okay. would, would not be able to plan out her birth, just like, oh, this is how it's going to go, because you, you're no longer yourself in that moment. And by that, I mean, you, you enter the spirit realm. You really are in between the veils of the physical world and the spiritual world. So it's almost like you we have to just protect her body and make sure she doesn't stumble and fall or hurt herself or, or slip. Because she's not there. She's just doing everything instinctually, like any mammal would. They would just mm -hmm. do what feels comfortable in their physical body, which in a hospital, you're not able to do that. In a home, you have the freedom to do that naturally. Gotcha. At, what, gotcha. at what point did you decide that this is what you wanted to do? Uh, to become a birth worker. It, it's not something so much I decided to be 100% honest. And I apologize if I flash, y'all. I'm not on OnlyFans. This is all y'all get. <laughs> <laughs> Now, nah, listen, little man got to eat. Let him eat. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yo, I got to say, this is the first time this is being done on the show. <laughs> it's the first time. And maybe oh, maybe Facebook will save me. You ain't saved me. <laughs> <laughs> so by having your son breastfeed, right that's what's up, man. Yes. I remember, yeah, oh, yes. when you did it online one time, I was like, oh, God, I saw yes. I saw yes, titty. I, I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm, I'm not in the frame, and then I realized, I am. Now, you okay. You good right here. You good. But Yo, it's, it's, not, natural. It's, it's natural. It's at natural. The, at that moment, Damon, it's not a titty. It's a bottle. It's uh, a bottle. Yeah, you're right. 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 Yeah, I gotta get my. See, I'm fuck, I was in the strip clubs too many years. Too many years. Too many years. I was in the strip clubs too many years. Here's a good question: uh, Can high risk women give birth at home or only in the hospital? I was good. I was actually. I was. 
want to going to ask a similar question. That's so yeah. Um, I, I know you also said that midwives sometimes go into hospitals. That's something that you also do as well. Do you also accompany people to the hospital or? or so um, naturally, to protect the woman's rights and her well-being, if you are seen being seen by a midwife for all your prenatals, it is your right to have your midwife accompany you to the hospital. Be it there need to be maybe a C-section because of. Um, issues that happen to occur in the moment, you definitely have the right to be accompanied by your midwife because that is the person who's been providing care for you. So um, a midwife naturally would never take somebody who's high risk. That's why we usually work with women preconception. You know, we work with women when they're trying to get pregnant. We establish, um, we establish the importance of nutrition you know, understanding the science of nutrition and how it pertains to you, your DNA, your genetic makeup, and what's the best kind of dietary lifestyle for you. We also establish the importance of a healthy home environment because all these factor in into your health. So um, they wouldn't take uh, a high risk client. They wouldn't take a high risk patient because they're not a certified or professionals who cut into your body if there's an emergency. We're only dealing with people who are, in a sense, completely healthy and can just have um, a non-invasive natural birth at home. So, so high-risk women can have births at home. That's not that's not that recommended, right? It's not, no. and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't find a midwife who would take you at home because that's risking your life. And and high risk, we have to be very careful with high risk. Geriatric, you know, pregnancy being over thirty, that's not high risk unless you have health issues and, and underlying health issues that we need to address, like diabetes, like obesity, like high blood pressure. Those things are all things that could, could be reversible through diet. So if those things don't get under control, you know, prior to um, maybe the later part of your pregnancy, then you are considered high risk and you will have to be seen by an OBGYN just in case these um, issues get worse throughout pregnancy and in labor and then you'll have you know the emergency c-section as a so so i'm considered high risk because i have high blood pressure and i got a little, <laughs> a little, a little four or five months pregnant right now you know what I'm saying? so wow. now if you, if you could um um expound you did say that you you actually didn't decide to no. uh, do this so uh what was it um how did you arrive at this point yeah i i say i, I didn't decide because a uh, calling this big and this uh, profound is it chooses you it is something that i have further uh, um, learned from my own family history and learning about my grandmother and my great-grandfather learning that they were healers and traditional agriculturists and people who connected a lot with nature so i realized that in middle school i had friends who were getting pregnant and you know i grew up in east new york i was in the hood shit happens and <laughs> i was just always so passionate about supporting my friends and i was like dang y'all got pregnant in middle school like i don't even know what sex is <laughs> to the extent of having experienced it but I, I was so passionate about learning about my body and the endocrine system and how we come to be human beings how we reproduce that I was able to educate them and hold space for them and really actually give them resources that they weren't getting from their families. Their families were judging them. You know, school, they don't have the uh, capacity to help a, a, a young girl when she's pregnant. They usually, you know, send these girls away to these programs or whatever. So I was, that's when it started to show up. And when I turned 16, my sister got pregnant at a young age. Um, and when I was in college and I was doing something completely different, Spirit said, um, here's this documentary, The Business of Being Born. Boom. And I was like, shit, I've been doing this already. Nice. Nice. And it just it just went from there. I started to get serious about it, um, training and then learning more about my history and how what the my people and what my people look like and how they served in this in this industry. Right. Which made all the sense. Excellent. So Excellent. why do you, why do you think it's getting becoming more acceptable now? Because like we started off like that, like, you know, I think up to like the 1960s, I know people still having midwives. I mean, on the regular, like that's the most of my, all my uncles and aunts came into this world that way. Birth workers. Huh? Birth workers. Birth, I'm sorry, birth workers. I'm, I'm going back, I'm saying midwives from back in the day and I'm bringing yeah. it to recent time. Like we're birth workers. Why do you think more people are going back to birth workers now? 
Um, it's very imperative that we take into consideration the racial disparities in this country. Okay, it's been um, it's been something we've done for the survival of our people. We've had to care for our own. We've had to look out for our own and midwives way back, you know, in the 1930s, 40s and 50s before we got, you know, colonized and pushed into the hospitals or many jailed and killed. Midwives were not just the people helping the women give birth. They were also suturing injuries. They were also the nutritionists. They were also the cooks, the chefs. They were also the pediatricians. There were also the persons who, you know, if you had a broken bone, they got you. They're, they're putting it all together. So I think it's important to understand that we've had to do it because we weren't accepted into these hospitals. Segregation, let's be real. That's why we, you know, when you look at countries like Cuba and Costa Rica, these countries, they have some of the best medical industries, medical history or whatever, the way they do that, what they do is because ain't nobody coming to save them. Ain't nobody, you know, looking out for them. So they've had to do for themselves. And when you do for yourself, what is it? Poverty and necessity breeds innovation. Mm -hmm. And as a people, that's why, you know, it's not a trend now. What is what's happening is that they realize we, we got to do it regardless whether people accept it or not. So I think it's becoming a trend now because now people are um, interested in getting paid for it. OK, having their hand in controlling it, having their hand in further colonizing it because they've seen a resurgence in, in us speaking about what we've been doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the Yep. Yeah, so the, yeah, like you know, I, like we've seen so many recently times. I remember the sister that died in Brooklyn. I forgot who went through a hospital. Not, not went through a hospital. Uh, it was a hospital in Brooklyn where that she died after child giving birth to a child. We started to see that more amongst people, women of color, because they're saying that we tolerate more pain and stuff like that. And I think that's one of the main reasons because we get mistreated inside the traditional hospitals when it comes to care to black, black and brown women. So, and if you yeah, look, I mean. You know, Go ahead, you know, right. sisters have been the the i mean look at henrietta lax all these women with quote unquote black people do not feel pain as much as as their counterparts and that's all institutionalized racism that's racism across the board so what's important is to recognize that there is so much of an alternative in our own community that we have to start looking and waiting for white man's paperwork and white man's validation to save us and help us birth our mm -hmm. babies because it ain't especially during this pandemic so many people have turned to giving birth at home i was one of the ones that i was like there's no way in hell i would turn into a hospital it's not safe in there y'all y'all dying in there why would i go i'm healthy as a horse yeah. <laughs> yeah. how how, and, and how would a yeah no go ahead no ahead. finish your statement well to be very specific the statistics show that 90% of the counties in this country, in this nation, do not have obstetrical professionals, meaning most hospitals don't even have a labor and delivery ward. They don't have the manpower or the trained professionals to help a woman um, through her pregnancy and deliver a baby. So guess who's doing it? It's the midwives, it's the traditional midwives, it's the community healers, it's the community midwives. And we have to turn to our people for this kind of service because most hospitals aren't even prepared for us. And if we go in there, they just catching bodies left and right. So we gotta be more responsible for ourselves. Yeah, I was about to say something. Um, how would a, a, a pregnant woman go about finding um, a, a birth worker, a, a quality birth worker? I think we have to remember to commit to our health. So do the research, ask the questions, questions do not be afraid to take somebody's 20 minutes for a consultation you know you have to find somebody you're completely comfortable with don't expect everybody to have white man's paperwork to provide good service because some of the people with white man's paperwork is you know doing dirty you know is doing they people dirty so i think we have to just connect on a more spiritual metaphysical level if you feel safe with somebody if you feel comfortable and heard this person that's providing the service that you're paying for is listening to you and your needs. Um, that's the important part. So honestly, talking to people, um, Googling, checking out these people's websites, 
getting these consultations. Okay. Okay. So yeah, yes. Before we go, anything? How can people find you? Anything you want to promote? What you want to do? Let me know. I will say I do offer consultations for people who is looking for birth workers, and I often have connections across the country. Some in South Africa, South America, Canada, even Europe. Some in West Africa. So definitely connect with me if you're looking for a birth worker, a.e., a doula or a midwife, the medical professional. Um, or anything of that sort. And I do want to promote my book. It's called All the Things You Can Be. It's my new children's book. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congrats. Congrats. Author, author. Yeah. How can they find the book on your website too? It's on my website. It's about a mother and child, their, the baby's purpose, and just different kind of ways you serve the world. It's really, really dope. It's all about us and representation. So. Yep. Awesome. And, you can follow, and you can follow Yaz on IG. She got an IG up there right next to her name. Follow my girl right here, you know, in her interest story. And Yaz will pull out a boob on you on, on Instagram <laughs> any given time. <laughs> yeah. Yaz, oh, listen, girl, you know, I love you, sister. And I'll get to see you. So hope to see you soon. I'll be in your area soon. I know you I know the area that you live in. And, you know, my family's down there. So we're going to link up soon. My mother, I'll be down there in May, actually. So I'm definitely going to try to link up with you in May. All right. Awesome. Yeah, All right, sister. You know. I love you. Tell your family, tell your sisters, I said, what's up, too. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys for having now. me and good luck with everything on the show. All right. Thank you. Thank you for coming thank on. You. Thank you for educating us. Peace, sister. All right. Oh, oh Ryan, promote yeah. it. Yeah, I, I, I want to say something. This this um segment just made me realize something. What's that? I'm a birth, I'm a birth doula. As many times as I've had kids, <laughs> I'm a birth doula. Yeah, you know, I, I, I mean, you know, I got a lot of kids, so the thing is, I was in there a lot of times. I I was rocking, kid. I was I was holding it down, man. I know how to do it. I was I was rubbing backs. I was rubbing feet. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm a and, 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 and they said middle of the night, you're gonna get uh, all type of cravings and stuff like that. You know? Yeah. And another you thing too, when I got the phone call, I was boom, I was there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I, I'm a birth doula. I'm a birth yeah. Doula. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that was interesting. That was really dope, and you know, I, I love I love that. More sisters are going to the natural way, and I appreciate it. And I know for all the sisters that can't do it that way, you know, you know, go to the hospital and do your thing. But look, but, but men don't get credit. We've been carrying around these children for all these years, yeah, and we don't yeah. get any kind of credit. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, it's not easy. It's not easy carrying. It's not easy carrying two packages of kids. In, 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 <laughs> a lot of kids in, in a man. small sack. It's not easy. <laughs> yeah. That's why you so, let it go sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah let it go. And some of them might let you know, it in a sack in a sack of coins. It's, it's <laughs> safe. And sometimes we might have to let it go on the tramp stand. But that's another topic. So <laughs> Yeah, man. A ten time offender. Ten time offender. Boy, D, I got your back. You're coming home. Know, you're coming I'm, home, I'm getting, D. I'm, I'm getting banned again. I'm getting banned again. D, you, you get know? locked up. You're coming home. I got your back. <laughs> you're you coming home every just, time. Put some money on my Facebook books, man. Put some money yeah, in my books. I got book, you. Right, I got you. Know? you. I got you. So, <laughs> and, you know, um, and speak, like dating and stuff like that. I want to talk on the topic of dating. Like, you know, we know governor of New York City, a New York State, is in some trouble now with the, his own political party. And some other, you know, and other people, uh, you know, talking about him. But is it harder now for women? Like, you know, we got a lot of professional women. And they say a lot of professional women, especially women of color, having a hard time meeting guys. Has this kind of cancel culture made it hard on women meeting men in the workplace? And I would love a whole bunch of women to start chiming on it. Because, like, I think men, I'm scared to say your perfume smells good. I'm scared, oh, you know, you got a nice dress. Oh, did you do your hair? It looks really nice, that style. Because I don't know how it might be taken now. Yeah, yeah. What well, you it's strange. I remember a time where, where I don't know, just pop culture, whatever it was you want to call it. There was always this thing. Oh, it was hard for guys to meet a woman. You know, it was always hard to figure out what to say. Mm -hmm. And now this whole cancel culture thing has taken that and just popped it up on steroids and everything. You know what yeah. I mean? So, so I don't know. You know, maybe it might be the women's turn to to kind of feel a little uncomfortable and maybe. Make the first move every now and then. You know what I mean? So I don't yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. And Nicole's right. Men are scared to make a compliment. Nicole, but you yeah. look good, girl. You look good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I can say it because you're the homie. I know you ain't put me in jail and then like that. Sue me. <laughs> Yo, when when I used when I used to see guys getting in trouble at work, um, due to like, you know, kind of like sexual harassment or whatever, 
it, it was usually kind of the creepy guys, the guys that mm. were always like coming on to the woman constantly. And she's already expressed that she's not interested. You know what I'm saying? My advice to guys is, you know, I, I'm not, I'm not dating. I'm not in a date. No, this, but your advice is for a long time ago when you used to be in the a long, time ago. Long, long time ago. The thing is like, you got to be today as a man, you got to be able to vibe if the chick, if the woman is interested in you yeah. or not, if she's interested and she's giving it back, giving you the rhythm back, then it's a go. But if she's telling you, I ain't checking for you, I got a man or whatever, I, I'm telling you right now, just chill out. Let's say just back question, off. You, the question you know, now is how dangerous is it to be wrong, though? You know what I mean? Like, you mm. know, sometimes you can miscalculate, you know? Yeah. <laughs> then yeah. you, down, you know, how, do you, the, how at risk do you become, you know, if you miscalculate? Well, I think what yeah. you have to do is uh, you have to be more direct. I think years ago there was maybe a little room for innuendo. Now you have to just be direct. Back in the day, guys would like to take this slow approach in some cases. I'm talking about somebody that was mature enough to just say, you know, where they would kind of let on that they was interested in a person. Now I think you might have to just be honest to just take to swing and miss. Like, hey, I'm interested in you versus mm -hmm. the you look nice and this, that, and the third. You might have to just come right out with it so the person says yes or no. And this way you can know because I, I had an experience when I was 14 years old. I never look, I never forgot this. Um, my father was an electrician. We had this, uh, he had this young guy that was about 20 years old working for him, young Italian guy. And the guy, we go to this job, and the guy sees a secretary and he asks her, it's like, hey, you know, would you like to have some drinks after work? And she's like, ah, I don't, I don't think so. So I'm 14 years old. I go to him, I'm like, look, she looked like she was really interested. You should ask her again. He's like, you think so? I was like, yeah. <laughs> after, after lunch, after lunch, he's like, you sure you don't want to go? When he said that second, you sure? The place filled up with black suits. They wanted him off the premises. He had to leave. He was about to get fired. All these different things like that because they said once she said no initially and he mm -hmm. asked her again, it was harassment. And I can Good. genuinely say he was a 20-something-year-old young man and meant no harm. And I learned that lesson right there. He meant no harm because back in the day, it used to be this thing like persistence. Some women may like persistence or they don't want you to just give up or whatever. And she seemed like she was undecided or on the fence. So he thought maybe, you know, if, she, if he showed more interest, maybe she would then give him a chance. And from that moment, now, the only thing that saved him was she was like, well, I don't want him to be fired. So he's like, did he harass you or not? And so that was the thing, but I learned the very valuable lesson. And so, yeah, today guys are afraid, and you got to err on the side of caution. It's valuable lesson for everyone to listen to a fourteen-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> a fourteen-year-old named Kelvin. <laughs> you ain't never had none at fourteen. Yeah, yeah. You ain't even had none. That's what I'm about. You should go. That's what you should about. go yeah. ask her again. <laughs> Yo, you were standing there. Like, you set that white man up, man. That's what you did. <laughs> Kelvin lined him up, man. Lined him up. <laughs> but the thing is, as soon as Calvin started saying that, telling that story, the first thing I, I I picked up on was, yo, Calvin's father had a white man working for him. And that was that was pretty good. Word up. That's right. His, his father over his father overcame. He heard the speech from all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! It, I worked in a, I worked in a command where a female um, won a lawsuit for six hundred thousand dollars for sexual harassment. Wow! What's the What's the number? <laughs> <laughs> and she she took a year off after that too. Yeah. Uh, so and it's, it's, the thing is, yeah. the lawsuit, yeah, the lawsuit was against the lawsuit was against the supervisor, but he he continuously kept pushing the envelope. And um, as a result of it, she got six hundred thousand dollars richer. But you know, wow. here's the funny thing: there was a whole generation of men that was taught, you know what I mean, to be hunters in regard to women. You know what I mean? To, mm. to not take no for an answer. That's true. You know what I mean? Just, you know, just oh, you didn't try hard enough. You know, you got to be on it. You know, don't let yeah. pass you. You got to. Yeah, you know, so I've seen some professors cross the line too. When I was in school, I've seen some professors where it was like. Um, you know, because I think they figured like, well, these these young ladies are over eighteen, and they just it just was really inappropriate. I, like I, I had a yeah, brother, a like a a psychology professor, and he would say some stuff, but I was like, man, like, did anybody else just hear that? Because it like you know, it it was really, mind you, he's a professor, he's in authority over, you know what I'm saying? He has a position, and it was like, wow. But you know what? He was taught the same thing about dating and the same information about women that a ton of other men. 
of his age group mm. of yeah. this certain age were taught. You know what I mean? But, so, like Lorette just said, I think it yeah. might be like a thing yeah, we for this generation. I don't know. I'm not like before women like to chase and like to like you know and they like to be pursued and they like to flirt. Now I don't know what this generation is. Everything is like anybody say they're offended by it. So I don't know if it's right. the generation of people. I don't, I don't know. Now look at what Nicole just said. She said professors are the worst. Now that's something that we wouldn't experience as guys. That's true. That's very true. That's very true. Think about it. She's in. She went to school, so she obviously had seen little suggestions, probably or hints. And I mean, wow, you you know, you don't really think of it like that. But that's that's interesting because they're seeing young women who are impressionable and whatever. So you can only imagine what goes on or what happens. Yeah, I, I definitely definitely tell you at work, if you're a supervisor, you definitely better be careful because because you have authority. So then, you know, people can say you're using that authority to try to get me to go out with you or stuff like that. You know, but I noticed when um, I was on the police department, like if you were equal rank, then it was a lot different. Like me and my wife met at work, you know, what I'm saying, but we were equal rank and both supervisors and hey. She couldn't control herself. She couldn't keep her hands off of me. So I basically <laughs> realized that, hey, this is what she uh, wants. You know what I'm saying? She, so she, I had to give it to her. <laughs> rumor, rumor has it that she Leslie Jones you. She, gave you, she, date uh, raped you. she got you high uh, and uh, date raped you like she did Eddie Murphy. Nah, I didn't need to be high. I didn't need I to be high. I can't believe he's going directly to the sponsors now. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, it was it was just obvious. She was just all over me, you know what I'm saying? Coming to work every day, just telling me, hey, how you doing, handsome? And that was it. It was on the popping. Some teachers were predatory. Wow. Yeah. Wow. You know, yeah. we, have have, we have to have some of these ladies yeah. on to talk about. Yeah, we got, we, yeah, we got to talk about it. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, true. That, that. that is true. Because we, that, we can never speak on our experiences. Like that. But, no, but the topic was about flirting. I don't know how guys and women are going to meet nowadays. I don't know. It's just taking... Oh. Yeah, I don't know. And, on the internet, I, feel, I guess you know. Yeah, but I feel bad for professional sisters because they meet men that are probably professional in that same lane. Could be lawyers, doctors, whatever. But the guys might be a little intimidated and say anything now because we got we got a lot mm -hmm. of you know. So, but I just want to move on, sake of time here. So recently, I don't know if you guys saw it, but Tamir Rice, uh, mother, mm -hmm. spoke out against Tam uh, Tamika Mari and um, Black Lives Matter and Benjamin Crump. You know, I don't know if the mother ran out of that first settlement money, and this is why she's speaking out, or the, what you guys thought. So, like, why? What are your thoughts when she's saying like people glamorized it and they got their fortune or got their fame on the death of their children and, and Mike Brown's father? I'm sorry about. That. I'm gonna talk about Mike Brown. Yeah, they didn't get a check. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they just they just lost their child, and and to them, it's like everyone else is speaking and everybody else is elevating their profiles and even if they don't make necessarily make a money or make money or raise money about that and keep it in their pocket they're still raising their profiles and they're going on and you know and they're looking back and they say well what did we get out of it you know what i mean mm -hmm. and, and it's hard to argue it's hard to argue against it you know so um i, I don't know I, I, and, and, and then also you're still dealing with that pain of losing your child you know yeah. it's kind of hard you know I'm, so, I'm right, right you can grab the mic up because i'm yeah ahead. no the thing is, is I, I mean i don't i don't know a lot about the story i would hate to think that this would be about a check you know what i'm saying considering you lost a child and, and and stuff like that so you know I, I i don't know i just would i just hate to think that it's about a check you know what i mean i don't think it's necessarily the check itself man i, don't, I just think that it's the pain that's involved you know yeah. that you're seeing that you can't really Okay, so there was this big flourish, and there was all this stuff that happened initially, and now it's died down. Your child has forgotten about it. But all the people who were, you know, shaking, you know, the pots and pans and carrying on and making all the noise have gone on to other things. You know what I mean? And you haven't. And what do you have afterwards? You know, so it's that, kind like, of unfortunate. It was what was it, the follow up? You know, past the initial, you know, -ha -ha, You know, did, yeah. Did I, think the is first. I think happened. you have to like. It's about the focus of what's going on. Like she, the sister just said in the chat. The thing is like, it's. If you if, like Ross, if it's about money, then that that then your whole purpose order. You have a public, you have, your son, your children. I'm sorry to say, have public deaths, you know, yeah. and it, it, and it, and that's what is the movement on that. Like you know, when you had deaths in the '60s, nobody said, "Oh, I want my check." It was like the movement. Let's keep this energy alive. My child's not gonna die. The money's yeah. not gonna bring your baby not back. Gonna die in vain. Not die in vain. Yeah, yeah. they're not gonna die in vain. I don't think Tamika did anything to try to 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 actually try to hurt. The mother of Tamir Rice or Michael Brown, anything like that, or my son, and and and, ben, and you know, now I know people have their things about Benjamin Crump. They saying that Benjamin Crump, when he gets on the case, 
the the shit goes away. But I mean, like the, the thing goes away. But Benjamin Crump is for the lawsuit, uh, generating the money for the family, but also that Benjamin Crump doesn't control the courtrooms that that they're sitting in. He's not the defense attorney. Or uh, and then you got thing about prosecutors like you got the shit that happened in Kentucky. We had a uh, uh, I say um, if we had we had a rat a R A T coon as a prosecutor. So I don't want to get banned again. So so if we had a, a nocturnal animal as a prosecutor or all these, uh, these slave catchers as prosecutors still, we're going to get the same kind of outcomes. Yeah. The so, fix yeah, is in. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, uh, this, I don't know, but like, I, I feel bad for those families. I yeah, mean, you know, it, like, you know, I met my son before, like, I don't think my son, he's not about, he's not about selling it. So he could have been sold out with his rap music. It is sold out like kids a different way. So I think they genuinely are, uh, uh, fighters and you know and, and frontline people on on this movement are just trying to get into justice for black folks. And and I don't think I mean I don't know nobody's pocket. I don't think my son is making millions of dollars or even becoming a millionaire as a result of this. You know what I'm saying? So this this is actually him going out because my son my son is not a flashy guy. He don't have flashy things and stuff like that. You know, so I I definitely don't think it's about money for him. Yeah, me either. Yeah. I don't, you know and I, and I respect respect him like, like I said. We are chop, let's chop it up. We feel bad for the both families, Tamir Rice, and for the brother Mike Brown and any other bro- brothers that have died along the way. You know, so I, I just think the energy should be focused on the movement still. And anyone to go after Black Lives Matter, I know people. I think I'm for the statement of Black Lives Matter. I don't know the organization. I know a lot of people saying Black Lives Matter get all this money, they didn't give money back. That's what Mike Brown's father was first. He's beefing about. I'm about the movement and the statement of people saying Black Lives Matter too. So, mm-hmm. so that's what, like I just want to say that in my. Little yeah. closing words. So, but um, another thing is uh, we lost one of our, our good uh, heroes. I want to look at take the time is our brother Marvin Hagler. Guys, yes. I know we big boxing fans. This is the bar, this barbershop type of talk. And we're gonna go yeah. to this part. We went we went deep, but now we're gonna like Marvin Hagler. I think one of the best pound for pound middleweights ever yeah. to put on the to put on the gloves. Ferocious, yeah. king, man. ferocious, ferocious king, man. You yeah. know what I mean? And he and he what? gave it up. Gave us some fantastic fights. Gave us all yeah. his heart and, and everything, man. And uh, it was never right after that Sugar Ray fight, man. You know that they jerked him on a Sugar Ray fight. Yeah, 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 right yeah, yeah. Day, You know what I mean? But you know, but he was just amazing. He was just an amazing fighter, man. Just, my my favorite era know. of boxing, clearly my favorite yeah. era of boxing. And um, yeah. I'll be honest with you, I haven't seen anything like it since when when hitting was part of the sport. <laughs> and um, they, yeah, I mean, really, they, they, you know what I'm saying, that they were trying to annihilate you, you know, and yeah. it's so ironic because I just started every now and then I'll, I'll watch Sugar Ray Leonard or I'll watch, you know, Hearns, Hagler, I'll just watch them. And I mean, it was masterful. And I mean, you know, I was, you know, lately all these interviews have been coming up in uh, Hagler. They asked him how he felt about Hearns. He said, he said, I have to hate him. He said, I have to build up the hate because when you're yeah. about to go in there, you got to do it. You know what I mean? And so that's what they did. And they, but they had the, the utmost respect. Um, you know, the Sugar Ray Leonard was, was obviously a tipping point for him. He, he felt he never got his due. He felt he never made the money that he should have made. And everybody, yeah. Sugar Ray was like a national treasure. He was everybody's favorite and things like that. So, but um, I definitely salute. Um, a masterful boxer, and uh, the thing that amazed me, the man never got old looking. The man just right. always stayed right. in impeccable shape. He just yep. always looked the same, took care of himself, you know. But he was an absolute warrior in the ring, and so we're so appreciative. And I'm glad we actually had a chance to see um, his greatness in real time. And every young person out there that hasn't seen him, go on YouTube and check that era out. You'll, yeah. you'll absolutely love it. Yeah, absolutely. And, the, and one thing I say about Marvin Hagler, why well, I think they were scared of him. Back in the day, and Rodney always told me this: they always scared of the big black bald man. That's and right, him, man. if he was bald, and Sugar Ray was a pretty boy. I don't yeah, know he was, yeah. he was safer looking. Yeah, that's why right. he was safer. Sugar was right. safer. And you got to also realize if you if you if you follow that era, um, Marvin Hagler was very also out very spoke. He was outspoken, so he said a lot of things that people found that be offensive. And he was extremely confident as a black man, and that's mm-hmm. sometimes white America doesn't like that. He was bald. He was ferocious, and he was outspoken. So it, that's that's extreme to some people. But I remember being a kid. I had a Marvin Hagler poster in my room. The the two greatest fights I ever saw was the first round of him and Hearns, which was oh, historic. Historic. I don't think I I don't believe that there ever will be a first round like that. No, I mean never watched you watch. Yeah, I mean the the first round everybody's got their most energy. They yeah. came out there and they slugged it out until somebody dropped. 
You know what I'm saying? You know what he said? Rodney, he said that they threw on average 80 plus punches a piece yeah, in that correct. round. Correct. In the round. And wow. I'm going to tell you another thing because oh, I'm a little bit of an oh. historian. If you need to watch the fight with him and Dwight Kawi. Woo! Oh, yeah. That was a smoker, too. The yeah. thing is, Marvin Hagler, no matter what you hit him with, you could hit him with a Pinto, a Ford, a Buick, <laughs> he was still coming. He did not stop. He was going to be yeah. in front of you the whole yeah. time. And yeah. the thing is, he was a master of his craft. He took it very seriously. He was always in, as Calvin said, impeccable shape. Even when he wasn't fighting, he was in impeccable shape. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, he moved to Italy. He started making movies in Italy. And he still was in shape after that. Still had a six pack as like an older man. Yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. But um, Marvin Hagler was definitely, definitely one of the greats. And I definitely don't think Marvin Hagler got his just due yeah. in, in, in so, history as boxing. Yeah. So a person that got his just due in the gospel music was a brother, Kurt Franklin. Kurt <laughs> Franklin, as we saw in uh, recent times, had a uh, well, he had a family, private family matter that his son made public and mm -hmm. put it on. I uh, tried to really. Uh, 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 get people to look at Kurt Franklin in a different kind of way. So he's trying, I think he's trying to hurt his career. He's trying to hurt his, trying career. his career. His yeah. son is a 33 year old man. Now he's now he's claiming. Uh, recent, uh, I saw maybe a couple of days ago that Kurt Franklin uh, molested him or knew that he got molested before and and then say anything come to. So what are you guys thoughts on this son now trying to play this? I, I think the son and I didn't hear that part, but I think the son is realizing this. This this backfired. Yeah, um, right. I, I see right. no support for the son. I mean, people, I mean, Kurt Franklin is coming across as a sympathetic figure. First of all, every parent understands the frustration uh, of when your child goes in a direction that that is definitely off the rails. And that's what it looks like with this young man. And what this is not the first time they've had issues with this young man. And then the other kids are vouching for their father. And um, it, to me, it really looked forget the, the the cursing and the arguing families do that period that's just across the board but the thing is it just really looked so punkish on his son's part so Correct. weak i mean i don't care what my father used to have this expression i'm still your father i mean right Correct. wrong or different i'm still your father and there's still a Correct. level of respect that i would give my mother and father regardless even if they were in the wrong respect there's still a level of respect that i'm going to give and i will never ever disrespect uh, my father by shouting at him or whatever that I, and it just it made him look bad so whatever he's saying now i think it's much to do about nothing i mean i'm not i'm not remotely interested in um you know kind of disrespecting kurt franklin behind it i don't look at him any any different or whatever like that i mean i just think it was a bad look for the son more it, it, it looked worse than what the son uh, playing that looked worse than than kurt saying that mm -hmm. yeah yep. so, Elvin, i'm gonna say something you can't say I'm going to say that was a bitch-ass move, what his son did. <laughs> now, the thing is, it's the, it's, it's the ultimate betrayal. That's that's what we that's what we witnessed here. And, Damon, I'm going to correct you about something. You said he was a 33-year-old oh. man. He's not a 33-year-old man. He's a 33-year-old boy because only a boy would have did that to his father. Right. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Punk punk yeah, he was a punk ass. That was a punk I'll ass, bitch it. ass move. Yeah. yeah. So the thing no. is, like you said, Kelvin, you're absolutely right. It did backfire on him as well as it should. Because the thing is, like, to, to do that to your father and to air out your dirty laundry. Say, I'm from a family, like, we, we didn't air our dirty laundry out. You know what I'm saying? You know, I'm, I'm, in a, I'm in a marriage now that we have that same rule here. We don't air our dirty laundry out. You know, we're family, whatever our dirty laundry is, we keep that, we keep it here. You know what I'm saying? But for a, a son to do that to his father, ultimate betrayal. That's, yeah. that's it in a nutshell. No, my mom used to say, there's, a t there's definitely a titillation factor involved in this, obviously, you know, putting putting, the, putting our family business out in the street, as we used to say, you know, yeah, I mean, what yeah. my mother used to call it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, and, and, and you're right, you know, this was not, you know, this was the, the act of a 33-year-old boy, you know, man or whatever. Boy bitch, boy bitch. Yeah, 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 you know, he's a bum. Yeah, yeah, he's you know, a but, 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 but here's the thing, you know what I'm what I what what stuck with me was uh Kirk answered the phone call. So whatever it was that was going on, he wasn't expecting to have that kind of conversation. You know what I mean? I know they had they had previous you know previous confrontations and conflicts and mm -hmm. everything, but he wasn't he didn't when he answered that phone call, he he, he that was that wasn't it. He wasn't expecting this to, to have that sort of confrontation. So I you know he was he was definitely I think his son definitely maybe even had uh, a more more insidious uh reason. For making the call in the first place, 
You know, yeah, you, don't, you don't, you don't, put, you, it's, it's corny to even put somebody on freeway without a person knowing that. Like, you don't record somebody yeah. if, and yeah. they don't know that. That's it. You setting somebody up. That's, that's foul. That, yeah. That's yeah. foul right there. And doing that to your father. And doing yeah. it to your father. Yeah. Yeah. And then the yeah. other thing people were saying, they say, oh, Kurt Franklin was cursing. So what? So what? that fucking man. Curse exactly. Keep your, and oh, by the way, he... curse to keep your teeth white. True. <laughs> 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 make sure people know yeah. that. You know what I'm saying? The thing is, too, guess what? We're all human. We all we all make mistakes and we all get mad. And obviously, Kirk Franklin was very upset at the moment. Yeah, he might have wanted some he, bread. Oh, yeah. He might have wanted some bread. Because yep. I'm not sure. Is it, it's Kurt, that child with Kurt Franklin's current wife or another wife? Previous another wife. Relationship. Previous relationship. Previous relationship. Uh, uh, yeah, I, think so, was, yeah. I think it was previous to him being a recording artist. I think, you know, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, the other yeah. kids grew up with the, the, the benefits of. You know Kirk his Franklin. fame, his fame, and yeah. this one didn't. So he actualized so, man and, and husband yeah, and so, father. Yeah. So he's a child when Kurt Franklin was just quiet boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or just when Kurt was in the street, probably, street you know, yeah, probably, you know. Not real Christian. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they yeah, curse. Yeah. They curse. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not going to say a name, but I'm. I. I used Christian to do sometimes no. lim, limo work, and I had a few, you know, well-known ministers or reverends. In the back of the car, and I'm telling you right now, they curse. They absolutely goddamn, curse. You goddamn right. Yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> speaking of people getting set up, this is a guy named Derek Jackson. I'm just getting familiar with him. He's a like a a, a blogger, and I guess he talks about relationships and stuff like that, and women stuff, women relationships, and with men and all this other. He has all this information, and for what I understand, the women love him, but guys hate him. And he just got lined up by his side chick. She exposed that he's been cheating on his woman. For the longest time and those other stuff like that. So I don't know if you guys know about the story. I'm just finding about this today. So is this is this a Dos this the Doskin brother that usually like sits in his car and yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. That's him. That's him. Yep. That's okay. Him. So he got caught cheating. Yeah, man. Side chick blew him up. The lot I said, go back to episodes before when I told you they don't make good side chicks anything. Don't make good side chicks. <laughs> right. He didn't get caught, Rodney. Right. He didn't get caught. He got exposed. It's a different yeah, exposed. <laughs> he got exposed. Yeah. Same thing. He got exposed. He got exposed. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. But side chicks ain't the same it. no more, man. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. You know, it's, it's that glass house effect. You know, if you're willing to, you know, I, I give you an example. You know how people be like, don't judge. The Bible says not to judge. It's not true. That Bible says judge not, that ye be not judged. So if you're willing to say all these things, then be willing to have them come back to you. And that's just the reality. So people don't have empathy for you when you become kind of this whistleblower on everybody else. And then you fall into the same trap. That's just the reality of it. You know what I'm saying? And so if he's a person that's that's talking about how he's so faithful and dedicated, you better be faithful and dedicated, dedicated because if you're not, then yeah. it's going to be a lot larger. And, and once you put yourself on that pedestal, it's a it's a much a steeper fall. And that's just the reality of it. Mm. Now, but what this shows is that he is full of shit and that he is actually preying on women because he's selling them something that he's not. So he's lying. He's living a lie. You know, he's right. telling, oh, I'm so faithful. I'm so this. You're, if if this is who I think it is, he was like, oh, you got to treat your woman like a queen yep. and this that's and right. that. This is him, right? Yeah, talking all that nonsense. As a matter of fact, if I'm not mistaken, I think my wife showed me him one day on the um thing, and I told her then I said this guy's full of this guy's full of shit. Mm. Nobody, first of all, none of us are perfect. You know, I'm not condoning cheating on your wife or cheating on your girlfriend at all. But when you go out there for trying to pretend to be somebody that you're not, so you can attract followers and make women believe that things are supposed to work, you're, you're dishonest. You're, you're right. dishonest. Right. Right. Anytime, anytime you try to elevate yourself, that's just how yeah. it's going. Correct. It's dishonest. You know, so you're, like saying I I open, you're saying I shouldn't open up a church? No. Not you. That's what it was leading to, that. That, that, <laughs> that moment. D, you, D, you're my brother, right? And I rock with you with a lot of stuff, but I'm not going to hold you down on that because I ain't trying to go to hell. But I know what you're going to go up in that church and do. <laughs> and say, I'm going to give me some money. <laughs> I ain't going to give me money. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you about to say, I'm sorry, Ryan. You cut you off when you saying something. Nah, it, it's all good. It's all good. Yeah, man. But I mean, I hope this brother wish him luck in his, his relationship with his woman. Hope he can get right. I don't see how he comes back from this because you know, black Twitter and black social media, especially with the brothers, they gonna I'll be on his. It. They on his ass. They on Kevin Samuels now. They saying Kevin Samuels gonna pay child support and all that kind of stuff. So like, it's, it's all gonna come out. They, man. Correct. Correct. It's like you, you looked at you look at this 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 cop in Atlanta goes up there says something stupid 
and they just opened up a whole just a can of background. You know what I'm oh, saying? The, They're yeah. gonna find something on you. They're gonna find yeah. it. They're gonna find yeah. it. Yeah, but that's why yeah. when you when you get a, a side chick, make sure she's really ugly. They will yeah. not leave you for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they have to have, have a tooth missing. You know what I'm saying? The head, the, the edges are gone. Get a Dude, good. <laughs> what happened to the side chick that used to get you home on time? Remember them days they, back they in gone. the day? They're they gone. gone. <laughs> They're gone. Let me scroll at the views. Oh, <laughs> Roll them. Scroll at Scroll it. Scroll it. I'm just joking. I'm just joking. This is a long, long time ago. This was not really this long time ago. Long time ago. But, you know. We, we wish the best for this brother, and we wish the best for our brother Kurt Franklin and everybody like that. But you know, brothers, this was a good, another good show, man. This was fun. I had a lot, a lot of jokes. My my cheeks are hurting from laughing so much tonight. This was really good, man. Um, I love you guys. Remember, people like, subscribe. I see you, brothers, next week. Peace. Take care.